Hello and welcome to the John W. Winkin Sports Complex as we are about ready for another conference matchup in the CCC. As it'll be the Hudson Eagles taking on the New University of New England Northeasters for this match matchup here on the gridiron and it should be a really good one. It's a rivalry matchup and there's a lot on the line here for the second annual Lobster Trap game. Brian Stackpole and Zethan Moss here with you and a lot of changes here that we've been aware of moving into this contest that will particularly impact the Husson Eagles, in particular in their backfields, Ethan. Absolutely, so we have Lizer Garnett, the main back for Husson, out for this game. That'll give a lot of carries to Jed Lober and, excuse me, Jordan Marcano, Marcano out of the backfield. Expect Marcano to catch a lot of passes on that screen. Lober will get most of the carries going up the middle. And we'll see how the Eagles change up their offensive style. Again, when you talk about Garnett not playing in this contest, he did account for 438 of the 503 rushing yards so far this season, so a very big loss in the backfield. But they have the capabilities on the offensive side of things, and we're imagining an aerial assault here today. Absolutely. You have to imagine that. I mean, UNE has a tough secondary, especially a lot of their defense is very good. You know, 13 of their starters, or excuse me, 13 of their defense has double-digit tackles on this on the year. So, you know, expect expect Visser to air it out a little bit, especially in that medium medium long range. Find John Bell, Russ Walker. Yeah. And, and the Eagles as well, trying to take that bad taste out of their mouth from their last two contests, hasn't been pretty for them. But they're hoping back in conference play back at home in particular for conference play will bring that winning edge again after losing some tough ones uh, to Endicott College last week by 20 to nothing and a pretty difficult loss to Springfield 49 to 7. So they're hoping to right the ship here today and with the fan base in front of them a main rivalry game this could be the recipe for the success. Yeah absolutely the, the fans here at the Winkin Complex always loud always rowdy always want to make it close uh, really propel their team. Hudson really known for that, uh, getting a lot of reputation recently, especially with those basketball games last year, getting very wild, and really expect this crowd to get, get crazy today. For the University of New England Nor'easters, which I love that moniker, by the way, that Absolutely, nickname, yeah. you're looking at a very incredible offense. This is a team that will really put up some points through the air. They have the fourth best passing offense, averaging around 184 yards, but when you look at Jarrett Hanault, he is one of the best in the conference, leading the CCC in passing yards and first in touchdowns with 11. And he can get it done a little bit with his feet as well. Yeah, absolutely. A dual threat quarterback can really scramble, especially if a play breaks down, and, and really look for that, especially with the Eagles getting a lot of good pressure on that defense, that defensive line. You know, Tyreek Mann on the outside, DJ Wilson can put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, make some plays break down. Eagles currently 0-1 in the conference, 1-4 overall. The Nor'easters are unblemished in the conference with a 1-0 mark, and they're 3-1 overall. Another interesting wrinkle here, too, is both these teams picked back-to-back -back in the preseason poll. The Nor'easters picked five of seven teams. Husson just above them at number four, so you know big, big points, so to speak. That W on the line really means a lot. But we'll take a quick break here. We'll step aside for the national anthem and get ready for kickoff here in this huge conference matchup.
And another great rendition of our country's national anthem. And that means it's almost time for kickoff here in this matchup. Should be a really good one. Again, this is the second annual Lobster Trap game, so we're really looking forward to seeing which team comes out on top. Eagles, of course, winning last year. We'll go over that as we go along this broadcast. But we do want to take a moment to thank today's game sponsors. Performance PT, designing a healthier you. Greenway Equipment Sales in Ellsworth and Bangor. Nothing runs like a deer. Governor's Restaurant and Casella giving resources new life. Well, Ethan, uniform report. Let's start with the visiting Nor'easters and what they'll be wearing and donning here for today. Absolutely. So they're, they're wearing the white jerseys, very crisp, very clean with the blue pants. They got a nice little bolt on the side. I, I really like those jerseys for UNE. Hassan wearing the green and gold, uh, our new home alternates. Uh, they were our main home uniform last year, but a new blackout uniform is now the main home uniform in this one, wearing for the rivalry. Should be an interesting one here today, and it's a broadcaster's delight, too, with those numbers in particular for UNE. Very visible. Those black jerseys for Husson were a little bit difficult to, <laughs> a little bit difficult to make out. Absolutely gorgeous conditions here from Bangor, Maine. Woke up around 40 degrees, but it's slowly elevated up in temperature-wise as Husson will get the kickoff, and they'll return this one back. First kick is going to be right through the goal and through the end zone. And the Husson Eagles will start going from left to right across your screen. We really appreciate you joining us and making us part of your Saturday afternoon plans. And again, we'll see this sort of new variant for this Husson Eagles offense here. Again, we talked about Nick Visser, and he's been very, very good. He's 84 for 137, completing 61% of his passes for 875 yards. Three touchdowns has been picked off quite a few times with five interceptions so far this season. Yeah, he's had some early struggles in the season. He's had a couple of good games, particularly against Alfred State. Uh, was really able to air, air it out well and find his receivers. He starts in shotgun formation. Here's the handoff. Not a problem there, but not a lot of yardage on the rush. As we predicted, maybe a little bit more of an attacking style offense through the air, but the Husson Eagles go to the bread and butter of a quick run up the middle here to start things off. Again, Marcano has big shoes to fill with Garnett being out. I expect really split carries between him and Lober. Um, he'll get a lot of the screen passes on the outside. Two wide receivers lined up to the near side right, two to the far side left as well. Shotgun snap. Visser eyes down this left side of the field, a misconnection there. As again, the Husson Eagles, this time trying to get a little bit more positive yardage after the two yard rush on first down. It'll bring up a third and eight opportunity. John Bell, very good, uh, filling in a lot of the slot work him, him and Russ Walker really split that time and you saw him open on the slant right there just wasn't able to connect of course the Eagles helmed at the top by Nat Clark in his third season sporting a 12 and 13 overall record looking to get back to the 500 mark quick two-step drop over to that far side breaking that's going to be Bell all the way past the yardage to gain that he needed to and right in front of the UNE bench and that's a first down for the Eagles and after things didn't really start to get going early on, then the offense starts clicking, at least to move the chains for the first time. Absolutely. The Eagles have really been benefiting from a lot of simple play designs. Not, nothing too fancy, really just getting a receiver open. And mainly, that again, that's John Bell or Russ Walker. The, those are the ones that are getting open. It's weird to think of a wide receiver as a safety blanket, but that really is the case with John Bell. Absolutely. Lost a huge safety blanket with Aiden Hogan last year. Another rush up the middle. It's going to be Marcano. And he's going to get a 10-yard run for another first down. And the Eagles already progressing quickly down the field. Very good look on that left side. The left guard, Damon Reynolds, center John Dugan, uh, just opened up a nice hole for him to get through. 5'8", 160-pound senior. Marcano looking strong out of the gate on his second run of the day. He's very shifty, very shifty back. One thing we were also noticing, is Ethan, is the wind was a little bit more howling before the contest than... Right now, the Eagles are going into that slight bit of a breeze, or actually it's at their back, though it has died down considerably. Here's another handoff. Marcano gets about a four-yard carry on that attempt, setting up a pretty manageable second down. Jed Lober coming in. I think we're going to see a nice run up the middle, either that or trying to take a little deep shot as he, he can get some good blocks in, uh, especially with this offensive line. It's a young offensive line for the Eagles. Yeah, Lover with three rushes for just two yards this season. Third string running back, getting a little bit more 
looks here, you would have to imagine today. Three wide receivers set, to this near side left, pump fake, then over the middle, intended for Bell, but great defensive coverage there by a couple of Northeasters swarming and storming up to break that pass up. It's a good look. John Bell maybe a little bit too favored to his hand, uh, you know, double coverage. Visser tried to thread that needle and couldn't quite get it. Lober was good in, in, the, in the blocking, like I said. Mike LeMay in on the pass breakup, his fourth of the season so far. The junior six foot. Get another shotgun formation. Fisher has been working, rolling out to his right side. Quick pass, and that's completion, and that's enough for a first down. As Dom Wilson gets in on the action before he's pushed out of bounds on this near sideline. Dom Wilson has usually been a, a deep threat target for Visser. You know, filling in for, for John Bell. That was most of his work last year, but John Bell, again, wide receiver one this year. Dom Wilson has been really trying to stretch the field. And so far, it's kind of been drawn up what we've seen. Again, Marcano's had a lot more success than he's had prior in some of these matchups. So good start to the Eagles. Already with almost three minutes off the clock here in the first. Lober gets the handoff this time. Just to the back, and he's going to be brought down for a huge loss as the Nor'easters swarm once again, and now the Eagles pin back a little further. That's the defensive end, Anthony Cristoforo, for the Nor'easters, just really split that gap on that right side. It looks like just Ethan Hicks on the offensive line for the Eagles just missed his assignment. Hard to, hard to tell. Six-yard loss on the tackle in the backfield. So that won't help the yards per carry there for Lober. Just really just came out of nowhere. Here's Marcano's back in. Another three wide receivers set for the Eagles. They'll be looking pass. It looks like Fisher's going to be using his legs. He'll get the six yards back, breaks through one tackle towards the sideline, reaches the ball out, and it looks and appears to be another Eagles first down. And Visser can do that. You saw the play break down a little bit there. That didn't look very designed on a QB run. On the right side, Dom Wilson, John Bell both covered very well. So Visser able to read that and use his legs to hurt you. Almost matching his long on the career, or at least for the season, I should say. Came in with a, a long of 18, and that got to be close to at least 16. As he just breaks over the first down mark. Now two in the backfield, along with Visser. Whistle on the field. I'm not surprised to see uh, a duel back in the backfield for Hassan. Uh, I was, I believe that was Russ Walker lined up in the backfield. And I'm not surprised to see that type of formation, especially given, you know, try to throw a little bit of deception out there with Elijah Garnett out. Timeout on the field. We're going to break in the action, but it gives us a chance to kind of touch on the series history between these two teams as it's the fourth meeting overall. Of course, the Nor'easters in the University of New England, a fairly new program. They had sponsored a JV football program, uh, but have since established a varsity program since 2018. That first season, they were 2-7, and seven, but now since, actually have been pretty well in the Commonwealth Coast Conference, as we touched on a 1-3 record so far and already exceeding the expectations. Last time these two teams met, it was the first lobster track game, and the Hudson Eagles go and they pick up the victory, outscoring you in a 27 by 27 in the final three quarters. Uh, Nick Visser had 350 passing yards and 38 rushing yards, including four passing touchdowns in that matchup. So he's hoping to get a little bit of the semblance of that again here in this 2022 matchup. Absolutely. It's going to be a little tougher this year. This, this secondary has really stepped up for the Nor'easters. You know, coming away three takeaways on the year. Visser has thrown five of his own. Visser rolls out to the right. No problem there. He'll connect with his wide receiver, and another big gain here for the Eagles as they're knocking on the doorstep of another touchdown. Casey gets his first grab of the contest, and now deep in the red zone are the Husson Eagles. Yeah, tight end Colin Casey. Again, Eagles lost a huge safety blanket with Aiden Hogan, very good over the middle. He gets a lot of those powerful, those powerful catches on the outside and can really just carry a defense with him. Uh, so Christian Walker, Cole, and Casey have been filling in fairly well, although those are some pretty big shoes to fill. First and 10, just outside first and goal. Here's the handoff. The run towards the sideline, and the first touchdown of the game will be scored by the Eagles. And Jed Lober finds pay dirt for the first time. 
Yeah, Jed Lober's first touchdown in his college career, freshman. And just a great play design. Ran, ran outside, great blocking. He had Colin Casey out in front. I believe that was Dom Wilson leading, leading on that block as well. Just kept going outside, found that hole. And we talked about it too. Just a handful of rushes entering the contest today, but the opportunities afforded to him already lucrative. Eagles look to make it seven. So we await the point after. It is up, it is through, and it is true. Seven nothing, Eagles lead with 10-14 remaining in this first quarter of play. And Zethan, you really couldn't have drawn up a better start to this contest for the Eagles, getting the ball to receive and to start the contest and then taking it down the field for an easy score. Absolutely not. It's, it's really exactly what you want. Um, you know, Eagles have been struggling a lot in the red zone this year, only coming away with five scores, uh, four, four touchdowns. So getting into the red zone and having a very efficient drive like that, that's exactly what you want to kick off this game. Yeah, the offense has not been not been extremely sharp so far this season for the Eagles, but playing some really difficult teams. Whenever you take on a team of the ilk of Springfield College, you sometimes anticipate your stats to be maybe a little bit more skewed because of such a powerhouse in this New England side of things at the Division Three level. But realistically, you were hoping for a little bit more than 8.8 .8 points per game entering the contest, but already almost matching that on the first drive. Yeah, four of 13 on the red zone trips this year. Uh, it's not a great percentage, but hopefully turning it around this time and let the defense get energized and, and do their work. So we'll have the kickoff for the Eagles and we're awaiting the first drive offensively for the Nor'easters. A high end and over end kick. It's gonna be fielded by number four for the Nor'easters. Run back up the middle, right around to the 35 yard line. And that's where the Nor'easters will start this one off. We talk about the prolific offense for the Nor'easters, led by an incredible sophomore quarterback from Gosstown, New, uh, New Hampshire, Jarrett Hanault. Again, leading the conference right now in touchdowns. He's got three wide receivers in Shane Laporte, A.J. DeFilio, and also Mikey Brennan, who have combined for those 11 touchdowns. He's going to take it up the middle, and all does. Nice gain there. And that's another dangerous part. We talked about the dual threat nature about that, Zethan, but he's a guy who can definitely get it done with his, his legs as well. Oh, absolutely. 6'3", 225, can really run up that middle, especially when those plays break down. You see that, that really that triple-headed monster with his receivers, you know, obviously accounting for all of his touchdowns, like you said. 58% completion, zero interceptions on the year. He now has 116 rushing yards on 44 attempts. Also has three rushing touchdowns. That's this time using his arms. He'll complete that pass to A.J. DeFilio. And that'll be enough for the first down. So two plays, 12 yards, and they're hoping to answer quickly back after the Husson score. Obviously great field position to start off, and that's going to help. Doesn't really give this Eagles defense much of a cushion to fall back on. And as you can see, Alex Brown on the outside matched up against A.J. DeFilio. I think that's going to be one of our key matchups. Alex Brown leading the way for this Eagles secondary. Jack Mahoney in the backfield. He has 192 yards rushing, one touchdown. Another shotgun formation. Three wide receivers lined up to the far side, but it's not going to matter. And as the ball is loose, Eagles said that they have it, but of course the officials, the ones that matter, say that the Runner was down in Hanault, but there is a flag on the play, and we'll see how this all works through. It did look like he was down on that one. Obviously, you want to always go for the loose ball just in case. Not sure if that was an inadvertent dropping of the flag, and that looks to be the case. So another designed run here, actually. So there is going to be a face mask penalty called on the Eagles, and it's going to be a costly one. As they will go over into Husson Eagles territory and now deeper in as this penalty to now line up this spot of the line of scrimmage around the 36-yard line. DJ Wilson called for that one, number 44 for the Eagles. Uh, nose guard has been putting a good amount of work filling up those holes. That's the one thing to keep an eye on is which team can keep the penalties low. 
it's been a struggle for both teams all year. Shotgun snap, no wide receiver or running back in either side of Penault, and a quickly pass out to the far sideline, and that is going to be complete. And that'll be number one, Mikey Brennan, getting his first catch of the contest. Laporte, DeFilio, and Brennan have at least had three touchdowns. They have been pretty prolific on offense, averaging 338.5 yards per game which is good for also 30.8 points per contest. Penault rolls out to his left. No problem there. DeFilio gets the first down. It's finally dragged out of play and out of bounds. And another first down. And they're also knocking on the doorstep of their first score of the day. They've been very efficient offensively. You haven't seen a whole lot of running, which is a little bit unique or a little bit different than what, than what we've seen uh, from UNE this year. A lot of throwing. I think they're a little bit scared of Tyreek Mann over the middle for the Eagles. It's the same with Tucker Bazell. You have to imagine, too, Penault's really going to want to take that quick little drop back from that shotgun position. Right now lined up behind him is Mahoney. Play action. This one lobbed up in the end zone but knocked away. And a great play there defensively for the Eagles, keeping them away from six. Marquise Jackson just really close coverage on that one. Able to keep it close. Almost came away with the pick there. Marquise Jackson, a late addition into the starting lineup as he took over for Antoine Turner. Corner along with Alex Brown. You have to imagine these defensive backs for the Husson Eagles will be getting a workout for sure. Same formation. Now Mahoney steps to the right side of Hanal. 7.34 left on the clock in the first. It's a designed run. He breaks towards the right side of the line, going towards the sideline of UNE, and he's going to be completely stopped right in his tracks after a minimal gain. And a great stop there by the Eagles there, making sure he doesn't turn the corner and go for six. Yeah, on the designed run, didn't even look towards A.J. DeFilio on the outside. He was actually wide open. Alex Brown really let up on his coverage, uh, was expecting something different. Obviously, he read that right. Almost reminiscent of Thursday Night Football, not to belabor that <laughs> horrific game. That was not pretty to watch. Third and eight, ball on the Eagles 11. An ult again with Mahoney to his right side. He looks to his left, eludes one tackle. He's got some space, trying to make it through, right on the goal line. The Nor'easters think they have a touchdown, but I think he's going to be just short Josh Ladipo really filled in over the middle, tried to make that tackle, almost looked like he sent him over into the end zone. But lots of pressure coming from this Eagles defensive line. So it will be enough for a first down. It's now going to be first and goal on the one. Talked about the three rushing touchdowns, the design quarterback sneak. He's just going to need a foot or so, and that's going to be enough as he gets the distance, calling up the Tom Brady play. It is right over the center, not a problem. And just like that, one point game as the Nor'easters drive the length of the field on their own side of things. And now within a, an extra point away from tying up this game with 6.22 left to go in the first quarter. Again, like we said, passing attack for both teams working very well. Two very efficient drives leading in a score. Minimal mistakes, you know, offensive lines, both of them are working very well. A lot of really unexpected uh, good carries from Jordan Marcano on the Eagles side and then a lot of good passes and runs. Not a problem for Robert Innes as he buries that one through. He's now 16 for 17 on extra point attempts. And so far, we played almost nine minutes in the books. Offense is rolling the day so far. Gone by very quick. You know, obviously the, e the Eagles offense rolled right down the field. Marcano really stepped up to fill in that hole with Elijah Garnett, and Nor'easters answered very well. Wind starting to blow across the field. We'll keep an eye on that one. Earlier in the contest, or earlier before the contest, I should say, we we're noticing the wind, and you made a remark, too, that the ball was really dying when it gets to that high elevation, too. So we'll keep an eye on that on deeper passes and also potential field goal attempts. Yeah, absolutely. Visser loves to take some deep shots here and there, and I think those are going to be limited a little bit, uh, at least during this first half while they're driving uh, towards your, the screen, the right-hand right side of your screen. There we go. <laughs> but 
maybe some maybe some deep passes for an all as he can get the wind to carry it a little bit. Absolutely. Wind looks like it's shifting a little bit behind the back of Innes, so we'll do the kickoff again here. A long end over end kick, and again goes through the end zone. Not a problem, as he's had two wonderful kickoffs to start this contest, and sometimes that can be a difficult thing to do at any level of college football, but not really troubling the kicker here for the Nor'easters. I think part of that is they really want to keep it away from John Bell. John Bell has been great on the returns for the most part this year. Uh, he had a few big returns against the last home game for the Eagles against Alfred State, bringing a few out to the 40, one to the 50. So he, he has that big play energy with him, especially on that return. So we try to keep it away. Three wide receivers set. As Visser, one in the backfield will be a designed run, the handoff, and no problem at all. Nor'easter's not surprised on the Start of this drive being a run up the middle. That'll be Lober coming out. Marcano comes in. So the touchdown score for the Eagles does not have the success this time around, and they actually might have lost a half a yard. With Coach Clark, you see a lot of those plays get like reversed. When they work well on one side, he'll switch them, see if it works on the other way. Quick little curl, no problem for the Eagles. Pretty good gain. Tyler Thompson on the outside. So a quick little pass out. It looks like it's going to be around a third and four, so a manageable position now for the Eagles, which would be quite a contrast, though their first drive started off with a third down opportunity. Eagles were able to accomplish that nicely and move down the field. Yeah, they got held to a third and eight and was able to find Dom Wilson on the outside, or excuse me, John Bell on the outside. Get a nice gain of about 10. Working towards the outside on the left side. Looks like they have enough, and it will be enough for a first down. Just getting over the yardage needed to gain as Dom Wilson gets the reception. Yeah, he goes up for the high pass, a little bit high off the hands of Visser, maybe trying to account for the wind. Didn't really affect it at some short range. What's been impressive about the Eagles is sometimes you'll see football teams where, where they get into a third down situation, but uh, not a problem at all as they have been able to keep their calm, keep their composure, and pick up the big yardage that they need. And that's been something the Eagles have been struggling with this year. This is going to be a rush by Visser. Almost fooled me, and it's going to be a huge gain, the longest so far of the season, and he is fired up. The man from Santa Rosa, California, looks like he was about to traverse about half the distance on that run. Absolutely huge run. I thought it went to Lober on the outside. That's the mark of a good play action right there. Yeah, just took it right up the middle. And carried a lot of defenders with him. Again, Visser can really hurt you with his legs, especially if a play breaks down. That one was designed. Get Visser in shotgun formation. And this one's going to be a flag. Looked to be a false start on the Eagles. So it'll be our second penalty of the contest. And it'll be... On the Eagles, so it'll back up the Hassan offensive attack. Seemed to be the Eagles thought that it might have been a false start. At least on the Nor'easters. It'll be a snap infraction on the center, John Dugan, for the Eagles. You saw the ball just kind of float around on the, on the ground coming out of his hands, so obviously he went a little bit too early. So they're backed up a little bit. Visser, a little pitch out towards the side. Marcano gets a couple of the yards back, not the, all of it back from the penalty. So they'll set up a second and 11 spot now. It's a great idea to do something like that, especially after Visser hurts you big with that run. Uh, make, make it look like he's going to do it again and catch the defense off guard. Obviously not caught off guard this time. So it'll be second down and a little bit over 11, almost 12. I have to imagine a passing opportunity would be the preferred option here for the Eagles. Visser looking towards his left, pocket collapsing, breaks out, runs through off his left side, trying to find Bell, but will wisely just throw that out of play and live to play another down. Dom Petty working on the left tackle for Husson Hayden Fielder, uh, sophomore, 6'5", 285. Petty definitely won that one, got a lot of pressure, pocket started to collapse. 
Three minutes and 21 seconds left on the clock here in the first. Eagles huddle up, going over this big crucial third and 12 opportunity. I'm going to look for Dom Wilson deep on this one. Three wide receivers lined up. Instead, it's going to be a pitch over to Marcano. It's a couple yards before he's pinwheeled down just in front of the UNE sideline. And now the question becomes, is this a punting play or do you want to try the deep fourth down opportunity? There is a player down for Hudson. There will be a stoppage in play here as they attend to the Eagle player down. It does appear the Eagles will be bringing out the punting team at this stage. Eagles go for it a lot on fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Coach Clark has, does this. They haven't been great on it. Six of 18, 33%. You see it a lot in, in some, honestly, some questionable situations uh, to go for it. And it's worked out about a third of the time, like we said. Still attending to the Eagles player on that far sideline. A lot of the players for UNE taking a knee, along with the Eagles players as well. And while they attend to the injured player, we'll actually step aside and come back in just a moment here as you're watching Hudson Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Runs like a deer. Whether you have a lawn to mow, a driveway to plow, or a garden to till, our customers know you can't beat the quality and reliability of a John Deere. And right now at Greenway Equipment Sales, we have a great offer for you. Get 0% APR fixed rate financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor with a six-year powertrain warranty. For more offers, go to greenwayequipment.com. See the Smith Brothers today at Greenway Equipment Sales, Ellsworth, and Bangor. Choosing a school is really difficult, but I have never felt like I should have gone somewhere else. The thing about I like about the school, the class sizes are smaller. Making friends is easier here because of the fact that you are such a tight-knit community. I was shooting around a basketball, that's how I met my first friend. You meet a lot of new people from different areas of the world. I feel like I've grown so much here. And there's so many amazing people that work here to learn from. I definitely made the right decision coming to Hassan. And we're back here from Dr. John W. Winkin Sports Complex at the campus of the Hudson University in Bangor, Maine. And we are in an injury timeout as they do attend to Marcano. As uh, our thoughts are, of course, with that young man, and hopefully everything is okay. 
as they are still attending to him on that far side of the field and will likely have medical attention here at some point as they have brought a stretcher out onto the field as well. And again, thoughts with him at this time as well. It is a beautiful day here, at least from this Husson campus in Bangor. Temperature's nice. It's been a really great game. It's unfortunate this situation has happened here, but it's really been a, a great day for football nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. you got beautiful view of the fall foliage in the background. It's, it really just screams football weather. <laughs> yeah, the leaves are starting to change. It's this proverbial spooky season out there as we're closer and closer to Halloween. It really does feel finally like it's that football time of year. And as we know here in the state of Maine, we'll start to probably have some of that precipitation known as snow in the very near future. But right now, it is not in the forecast. has been a little frost, but that's where we currently sit here with the weather. Just absolutely beautiful little wind blowing from that far right side end zone. But there's 3.08 left to go in the first quarter. The score is 7 to 7. And both teams would really like a victory. For the Nor'easters, it would be a chance to go 2 and 0, but a chance to be moving up their record up to a 4 and 1 mark and really make a statement here in the uh, Commonwealth Coast Conference. Absolutely. They've been playing very well all year, especially on that defensive side. You know, again, that triple-headed monster receiving and running wise on both ends of the ball. And again, this defense really steps up whenever they need it, all positions. And for the Eagles, it's really about trying to get back on track again. They lost so many talented players from a year ago, already dealing with some injuries to start off this game, knowing that they were a little thin and running back. And of course, with everything going on here, not what we're cur uh, concerned with about really, it's more about uh, Jordan Marcano and, and hopefully him being okay. But uh, it's just something to keep an eye on moving forward here, too. But they want to get things moving back in the right track. They did pick up a victory earlier on in the season. But since then, they've been outscored 69-7. to So it was already good to see their offense clicking as they were moving the ball down the field, setting up this fourth down opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. You know, against Alfred, which was their last home game, uh, really only had a couple of good opportunities, good looks. They have finally been able to lift up Marcano. They are putting him on the stretcher to be taken and looked at, of course. And again, our thoughts and prayers with him, his family, the friends, and everyone here as well. Hoping everything will be okay. He's got an air cast on that right leg. That is one of the perils of football for sure with that high contact, intense nature that you see on the gridiron. This does happen from time to time. You just hope that no matter what, everything goes as best as possible for him. Absolutely. Again, I'm Brian Stackpole along with Zethan Moss, and we really appreciate you joining us here. It was a quick, quick moving first, about uh, 12 minutes off the clock here. It's a nice round of applause for Marcano. And again, our well wishes to him. So after the stoppage here, the officials will just try to get everything sorted out. And it looked like they were going to bring Husson, that was, bring out the special teams unit. But after that little bit of a break here to deal with the injury, Visser in the offense back out there on a big fourth and eight opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Clark, very aggressive on fourth down, like we were saying before the break. Six of 18. Not very surprised to see him go for it here especially with the way his offense has been going. Three wide receivers spread out on this near right sideline. Bell, I believe, on that far left. Visser breaks through the pocket. Almost taken down by the ankles, throws up the desperation, and that will be an interception. And here it goes, right under the 30, up to the 40-yard line, the far sideline, and then through over the 50. An INT there for... Number six, Mike LeMay, who already had a pass breakup earlier in the contest as LeMay carries it over into Eagle territory on the fourth down opportunity. And that's his first interception on the season. That play was broken from the start, really. A lot of pressure came in, obviously collapsed the pocket. You saw Visser roll out, and he really just tried to do too much to get it to his receiver downfield. So the unfortunate side of things was if Hassan wasn't able to complete that play, it would have been a turnover on downs. But with a LeMay return... And another penalty here. This one called on the Eagles as well. A little frustration after the play. 
So now not only do they give up the ball, but they're now having to defend with their backs against the wall once more and not the situation you wanted to see after starting off the game so strong offensively. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the things the Eagles have, have not been good at this year is, is really limiting those mistakes, especially once that first mistake happens and they really just start to pile up. This wasn't an execution penalty, I don't believe. This is more about a frustration side of things. So the ball will be lined up on the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for this very talented offense for the Nor'easters. They're hoping up to brew. Let's storm up the scoreboard with another score. I see what you did there. I try once in a while. <laughs> this one, fumble. It's going to be picked up. And then a swarming gang tackle there. As that was a drop fumble by Eugene Jordan. Just really didn't get that in the bread basket from the word go and then drops it and it was able to recover that thankfully for him. Yeah, and it looked like number 36 Adam Bertrand for us and got lit up on kind of a blindside block uh, while trying to get to that loose ball. And he's gonna come out of the game briefly. Hoping to be all right. Saw his father, legendary Maine high school football coach in attendance as well. Here's a snap from Hanol. Play action, throws over, no problem there as he connects with one of his favorite targets, Mikey Brennan, as the senior moves the chains. Marquise Jackson on the coverage for that was a little loose, really, especially on that outside. Really lost him on, on that nice turn inside, simple slant route. Under two to play in the first. Nor'easters again quickly working down the field. This ball be lined up on the 14-yard line of Husson. Jordan. Moves from behind Hanult over to his right. All the wide receivers lined up to the left. It's a designed run after the play action. Run up the middle. Not much doing there for Hanult. It's a good defensive side of things on the line for the Eagles. Stops him right in his tracks after maybe a, a gain of one. Getting there, I think, was Adam Bertrand back in the game. So good to see that young man back out there for the Eagles. One of the stalwarts for this roster. So far, quietly for the Eagles has been Tucker Buzzle, uh, you know, leading the team with tackles with 59 combined heading into this game. Again, same formation. Again, play action, and there is the sack. And the Eagles finally break through, and I believe, was that Tyreek Mann on the yep. sack? Tyreek Mann on the outside. He's been so good up the middle this year. I believe they moved him a little bit over to that outside defensive end and really just blew by that left tackle, TJ Jackson, Jackson, excuse me, for the Nor'easters. So the big force inside for the Eagles, pays dividends, backs them up for a big third and 15 now. They will have to have one more play before the end of this first quarter, as there's about a 11 or 12 second differential between the game and play clock. Low snap, Nog comes up with it, flag is out, the throw over to that far sideline, it's completion, and then quickly down, the Nor'easters will be short of the first down yardage marker as Brennan with another reception. But we'll see how this flag plays out here. Clock currently stopped at 14 seconds. If I had to guess, it would be a false start. It looked like right guard Tyler Arnold for the Nor'easters jumped a little early. So another penalty, offsides on the Eagles. I believe that's their third penalty so far of the game. We've had four combined, and again, the Eagles just affording more opportunities to this high-powered offense, not something you want to see. Again, it's, it's a lot of those, once that first mistake happens, then they really start to pile up, both offensively and defensively, and you see it a lot on the defensive side with those penalties. Two lined up in the backfield, along with an ult, one to either side. Passing play, he looks to go to the sideline, and the Eagles will pick it off. Just undercutting the play, and after giving the ball away and almost giving up another score, the Eagles get the takeaway they so desire. Marquise Jackson read that like a book, going outside, and just cut across right in front of the pass. Jackson, who gets the late start nod today, has two big, huge plays so far in this one, and the first quarter will wrap up on a big exc exclamation point for the Eagles after 15 minutes in the books. It's Husson 7, 
New England seven. We'll step aside and come back with second quarter action here in just a moment on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Five years ago, we started this journey of recycling. And with that same ingenuity, with that same innovation, and with that same entrepreneurship, we're approaching our next 45 years. We have an obligation to figure out how we can consume less, how we can recycle more, how we can create more sustainable products, and how we help our customers enable that. We owe it to the future generations to continue to do better and recycle better. Back here on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Brian Stackpole and Zethan Moss with you. Eagles will be deep in their own end. Visser trying to air it out. The deep pass, and it is going to be just incomplete. Bell, the intended target, right at around the 50-yard line. And you just see an encapsulation of the arm that Nick Visser possesses. And that's exactly what you want to do coming off of a big turnover like that. Again, those mistakes start to pile up, and you want to try and fix them. Visser looked out deep, beautiful placement to John Bell, but on the coverage was Nick Lombard, 6'3", 210 senior for the Nor'easters. Able to get that out of the hands. And now with Marcano also out of the contest, which we have to imagine probably for the duration of this one. The Eagles look to elect to go a little bit more pass heavy. This time though, a run up this near sideline and again going nowhere in a hurry are the Eagles. A great swarm defense. Again, one of those players in the mix, the guy who has an interception as well, and Mike LeMay. Jed Lober on that tough carry to the outside. Wasn't really going to go anywhere. Met by a wall of Nor'easters. Now the question becomes for Coach Clark and company is you want to get that first down and you feel confident in your team with the offensive weapons, but you're backed up right to your goal line. You do not want to take a safety in this situation. You have to really think a short pass, try and get as much yardage as, out of, as you can. Or give the legs of Nick Visser the opportunity, and they will take that, and they will exceed expectations. A huge run for him. He erases a third and 12, and then adds on to it to move the chains. That's been working very well for them so far. Three big plays on the designed run for Visser. And again, he can hurt you with the legs, and he's really showing it off here. And when you're down to your third running back, sometimes you need to get some other options out there. And that other option might be just the running attack of Nick Visser. So Lober in the backfield behind Visser. Three wide receivers, or receivers, I should say, lined up to his right. Hand off to Lober. He lowers the shoulder, but so does the defender. And just lays the lumber down there. That was a nice hit by number 24 for the Nor'easters. Nick Lombard with a great hit. Playing both sides of the field very well and run defense and then pass defense. You saw him again with that breakup with Bell on the deep shot of the first play of this drive and just really lighting up Lober on that play. Just over 13 minutes to play in the first half. Score still 7-7. Seven to seven. Hudson, after no gain on the play, spotting up a second and 10 opportunity. Snap quickly out. That's going to be a completion, and a little bit more after that one, after the yards after catch. And Casey again with another grab. Again, these tight ends, Christian Walker, Colin Casey, have a big pair of shoes to fill with Aiden Hogan. Obviously a big safety blanket for the Eagles, and, and really just a lot of those plays outside, you see them fight for a few more yards. So hard to fill those shoes. They've been doing a good job so far today. Yeah, up to 10 receptions on the season. Second one here today for Colin Casey. This time they go to the right side. Another completion, another first down for the Eagles. And then a little spin wheel and a cartwheel through. And some more yardage there. It's Tyler Thompson. Great job on the outside. He played a lot of games last year. Limited use so far heading into this game. But he's he's been on the field a lot in this game. So another good completion for the Eagles, who again likely will be more of an aerial attack in this contest, especially with the now mounting injuries. Under 12 to play, still 7-7. Seven to seven. Big matchup in the CCC. 
Eagles looking for their first conference win, a handoff. Lover goes right up the middle. Minimal gain, about two or so, setting up a second down and eight. Get a little bit of yardage, try and go for something, something in the medium, long range. Again, we talked about that pregame. Visser can really find good ball placement in that medium, long range. Again, we saw that with, with John Bell, even with the wind, right in his hands, but knocked out by the Nor'easters. Eagles break the huddle. Looking against this defense. Fake handoff. Visser rolls right. Throws this one towards the sideline. Another completion there. And it'll be just enough for another first down as Husson has looked sharp so far offensively. That's Winston Denizio. 5'11 junior on that curl route on the outside and just came right back to the ball. It's exactly what you want to do. I believe that's his first reception of the contest as well. As he gets a breather out there. That was his first snap of the contest, I believe. He came in for Dom Wilson. Usually fills in on that spot on the outside. Bell and Wilson are lined up on the far right side. A little dump down there. Four yard gain on another completion for the Eagles as Again, without the rushing attack necessarily being there with losing your first and second string running backs, now you're able to use that kind of running attack with just short passing, and it's worked out in space. Again, the, when the Eagles keep it simple, they really can run down the field well. You're seeing it here. There's nothing too fancy going on. Simple curl routes, simple slant routes, quick little dumps off, and they're, they're getting the job done. It's the KISS method, and it works out to perfection so far for the Eagles. Trying to take the lead. Pump fake, pass over the middle, that's another completion. Russ Walker, and actually it's a little bit more. I look down to check notes and I see Walker getting an extra yard or two and then five or six, maybe even 10 more. Nice. Broke a couple of tackles on yeah. that one. That's what the great mark of a wide receiver is, getting those yards after catch. As a sophomore will now get a breather, he'll check out. Again, Russ Walker been predominantly in the slot this year. And again, in the slot on that one, right, just a quick little slant right over the middle and make a few men miss. Nice big game for him. Speaking of the slot, that's where John Bell is currently lined up. Another false star penalty likely coming up on the Eagles. These procedural penalties now lining and, and mounting up for the Eagles. Looked like that was going to be a quick draw to the outside with Lober which on, on, on the first down, that's a, it's a great idea, especially the way lover has been running. He's been taking some tough carries on the outside. It's only a matter of time before he makes those men miss and breaks free for a big one. I believe that penalty was on number 70, the sophomore Aiden Crone. So another first down opportunity, this time backed up another five yards. Lober lined up to the right side of Visser. He's back. There's going to be the drop down pass to Lober. And he's going to try to find some more yardage and a pretty good completion just using some speed and space. And now it's going to be a first in goal for the Eagles. Again, knocking on that door for their second score. That pressure came through quick. They showed blitz and they brought it as well. But the Eagles expected that. Tapped it through. Found Lober easily. Lober with, the, I believe, a 16-yard gain. So... Well executed there, and again, that short little dump down pass works and pays dividends. Now we'll see what the Eagles do right on the doorstep. This is going to be a handoff, and tripped up right before the line, but gets over, and that'll be another rushing touchdown for a man who only had three runs entering today's contest. Right now, at least on the board, it is lined up as his second score. Is a flag on the play, though. We'll see if it impacts this. Came right after the snap. I'm not sure what they saw. But again, Lover, tough carry to the outside, taking it into the end zone. Looks like they're going to have to go for it again. So a flag holding on Damon Reynolds on the line. We'll back up the Eagles. So Lober, though, has been impressive. He's got a nose for that end zone so far. Absolutely. UNE crowd loves that penalty. Nice little split crowd here. Both sides pretty well represented. And that's one of the things about being pretty close in proximity. 
Hailing from just outside of Portland. About a two-hour drive. And not too bad, especially this time of year without the snow. Absolutely. Quick pass over. Thompson tackled around the six-yard line or so. Thompson, as you alluded to, Zethan, not a lot of action so far entering this contest, but he's really stepped up and been a pretty key cog in this offense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last year he got quite a few snaps on field and did very well in, in what receptions he got and wasn't used at all in the first two games. So good to see him being used here. Little pitch play, and that's going to be a fumble recovery. The only question is, was it recovered in play? At least for the moment, the officials, a little brief discussion, but it looks like the second turnover given away by the Eagles as they were progressing deep inside Nor'easter territory. That was just a pitch out. And then unfortunately for the Eagles, Lober unable to come up with a cleanly. Eagles are really rolling on that drive, so tough break for them as that just goes a little low on the little pitch outside. At least from the naked eye before when I was watching it, looked like maybe Lober was taking his eyes off the ball and down the field. And yeah, a little bit too anticipatory for the, for the defenders to come up. So now it'll be the Nor'easter's ball. And what looked and appeared early on to be a high scoring game has now been stymied a little bit more so with some of these turnovers and takeaways for both sides. Run up the middle, no problem there. Swarming defense again by the Eagles. Tucker Bazell getting in the action finally on that defensive side. Another Eagle player seemingly a little dinged up on the play. So the 24, Sean Savage coming off briefly. We'll keep an eye on Savage moving forward. He looks to be a lot of pain on the sideline. The clock continued to tick, tick, tick away. Currently residing at a seven minutes and 13 seconds left in the half. Designed handoff run. Right side off the center in guard position. Couple yard gains there for the Nor'easters on that play on the ground. I think they go a lot towards the run here on this drive. Want to eat up a lot of clock, you know, seven, seven minutes on the board and counting. Eat up a lot of clock and you, can, you have a good passer so you can rely on that if the run is not working. Do need seven yards on this play though. This is a third down opportunity. Nor'easters will get the ball to start the second half. So a wrinkle to keep in mind as they progress down the field, trying to eat as much time off the clock, but also get on the precipice of another score. Mahoney cuts out of the backfield, nine, lined up in the slot to the right side of Hinault. This play is ruled dead from the word go, as there will be a late timeout called. As the Nor'easters want to talk things through, because this could be a very big play in the first half for them. It really just looked like the Eagles were ready for whatever they were going to throw at them. They adjusted well to those those shifts. You saw both men in the backfield go out wide. This will be a big one here. Eagles want to make a stop after another costly turnover. That's the second one that they've had on the Nor'easter side of the field. This one was a little bit more difficult to swallow, especially with how close you were to scoring that second touchdown, or at least setting up a field goal opportunity well within the range, it seemed like, of air impurity. And the Eagles have been good in terms of ball security for those backs and the receivers. Uh, nine fumbles on the year, I believe only one lost. Now that makes that 10, and with two lost. Now after the timeout, we set up the third down and seven. Two backs in the backfield. Now they'll break out a little bit. Just now a little support to the right side and behind Hanault. Two-step drop. He's going to scramble out to his weak side left. Trying to turn the corner. And it looks like he's going to be just short of the first down marker. Scrambling for his life there. Didn't like the options afforded to him. And he'll set up a fourth and short. Offense is coming off. Looks like they're staying on there for a second. And... That would have been an interesting decision. Yeah, that would have been a tricky one if the Eagles were able to stand tall. Instead, we'll now see the punting performance of Andre Haddad. Back his bell to receive this kick. He's lined up around the 45-yard line in his own territory. 
snap. And Dodd gets this one off. Error caught there by Bell right around the 49-yard line on the UNE side of the field. So the Eagles turnover not as costly as anticipated. Deep in their own end were the Nor Nor'easters. Now we'll see if the Eagles can get the lead before the break with 5.38 remaining in the first half. Yeah, the defense really just showed up for the Eagles on that one, especially Tucker Bazell who's been quiet all game now, now getting his, his reps in. and Good field position for the Eagles, keep things rolling offensively. Two touchdowns, both on the ground, one for each side so far. Takeaways, we've seen three. Two interceptions, one for each side, and also that fumble recovery that we saw that set up the last drive for the University of New England. So good field position to start this drive. Here's the handoff and the rush up the middle for about maybe, maybe a foot. Russ Walker got the carry on that one. Looked like they faked jet sweep. And he just took it on that little draw. Didn't get much out of it. So Russ Walker, who is a wide receiver for this team. Lined up as a, a backup wide receiver, at least listed on the depth chart for the Husson Eagles. So it'll be second and ten. Quick pass over Thompson, a little slant from that far from the near left side, and pretty good yard gain, uh, yardage gain there by Thompson. Again, that's really the simplicity that the Eagles thrive with. Christian Walker coming on, looks to be. A little bit of a jumbo set. Christian Walker, a pretty big tight end as well. I said six foot two, two forty five. Just about one yard needed to move the chains and continue this drive. Run right up the middle, not a problem at all. As they get the first down and then some. Christian Walker predominantly uses the blocking tight end. Colin Casey, usually that receiving tight end, both on that for the block. And Loder gets that right up the middle for the first down. Just over four minutes to play. Eagles with a decently heavy passing for short yardage and running attack here on this drive so far. Small sample size. Two wide receivers lined up to either side of Visser. Here's the quick handoff. Lober right up the middle, barrels through for about a gain of six. Gets to around the 31, 32 yard line or so on the game. Eagles really sticking with that bread and butter. Lover going up the middle, chewing some clock, trying to come away with the score before halftime. And you kind of like the idea too. Eat up a, as much time off the clock. You've been able to move the ball down the field, and Lober taking the most of his opportunities afforded to him as well. Absolutely. You know, you score with a little bit of time, you'd really trust your secondary. Loeber trying to barrel through, but unfortunately for him, the lowering of the shoulder was met by a very good stand there as Nick Lombard has been very stout and stellar. Three safety officially, but he's really been playing safety and linebacker. You see, see a lot of that with Derwin James on the Chargers in the NFL. Mm. A little bit of a homerism there. I love the Chargers, but, <laughs> but cool. he really plays everywhere. A little tough start to their season for sure. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> Under three to play. Visser, after faking the handoff, will sneak up through close to a first down on this third down opportunity. And that's the first time a Visser scramble hasn't really gone more than five yards. Let's see where this one's going to be lined up. They're going to say it was enough for a first down. I thought it was going to be close, but the officials signify four more downs given to the Eagles. And honestly, if it was fourth, they'd be going for it anyway. Especially in this side of the field, too, and you have Absolutely. to be confident in your offense. So the Eagles taking their time, huddling up again once more. The Nor'easter is already ready in their defensive stance. Visser again. The Lober lined up to his right side. Three wide receivers to his right side. He'll roll out that direction. Quick pass over, five-yard gain there on the completion. And that one, I believe, is Dom Wilson once more. A little bit short on that pass. Looked like Dom Wilson, if that was on target, had a little bit of room to work with. 
but a little bit off to his left. Had to come back and get it. So the time continues to dwindle off the clock here. Not as high scoring as I'd anticipated after the quick start to the game for both teams, but both teams taking their advantage of this opportunity, in particular the Eagles this time through. Visser, quick pass over the middle. Be just short of the first down marker. It's Casey with the yet another grab. That just the pressure. The blitz came from the Nor'easters right up the middle. Visser just scrambling to get away from that. You want to make a correction? That was Thompson with yet another reception there. 70 seconds left to go in this first half of play. 7-7 seven to seven our score. Eagles driving, looking to put up at least three, if not six or seven on the board. Eagles having some trouble here, trying to get to their last player out as they had 12 men in the huddle. Thomas Thompson realizing it and trying to sneak off the field, unable to do so. So again, the Eagles starting to make that progression penalties, setting them back and setting them to a difficult spot. This is almost always what we've seen this year. It's been the main theme is, is a lot of offense getting rolling, gaining a lot of momentum, and then a mistake really derails it all. Reminds me a lot of the main Black Bears, the Division I compatriots of this Husson Eagles team. A lot of players who have come through both programs actually throughout the years. But uh, they have also been mired by procedural penalties left and right. Eagles looking for their first conference victory. Visser, underneath, that one's gonna be Lover. He's gonna be sent off the, out, out of bounds on this near sideline with 32 seconds left. And that will be enough for another first down. Great job getting to the outside there. He was really being tracked down by the defense. Get out of bounds and stop the clock. Hassan will huddle with the clock stop now. Ball will be on the 12-yard line. Eagles, would you, you would have to imagine, especially with the wind at their back, or at least in field goal range, but they would love to get a touchdown. Play action. Visser rolls out. Fast to throw this one away, and will be incomplete. Great work there by the defensive back, getting his hands in the mix and breaking up that pass. That would have been a good five, six-yard gain. Colin Casey almost hauled that in. That was great ball placement by Visser, especially on the run. Working out to his right. But just again, like you said, the DB getting his hands in there, breaking it up. So 25 seconds. Be second and 10 from the 12-yard line. Three wide receivers lined up to the right of Visser. Single wide out to the left. Lober also in the backfield, another rollout. They'll roll this one out, a completion to Russ Walker. He'll go out of bounds at around the six yard line. Actually, maybe a little bit sooner. Let's see where they actually put this one out. Spot that about the five, it looks like. Yeah. So we'll set up a third and short, third and three currently listed up on the scoreboard with under 20 seconds left to play. Can certainly get a couple of good plays off. Two timeouts left for the Eagles. Get a couple guys out of bounds. Work short, but obviously five yards to go. Quick to the end zone. Visser flat-footed. Then the pocket collapses. Took a little too much time waiting for that play to evolve. And he's going to be sent right back down to the turf. And there's eight seconds on the clock. And you have to imagine now in this fourth down situation that the Eagles will have to discuss things. But this is... Well within their field goal range, you would have to imagine for parity. And for Coach Clark, he's been very aggressive, and sometimes that's come, come and bit him, especially in the end zone. Late interception in the second half against Alfred State in the end zone, going for, for it on fourth down with time expiring. So similar situation, we'll see if that affects his decision making here. So 11 seconds will be on the clock. Ball currently on the eight yard line. So it wouldn't be too bad of a kick by any means. Certainly. Coach Clark and company gonna be talking this one over on a fourth and six. 
And with most of the offense coming off the field, it looks like that they will be kicking it. Still coming away with the score going into the half, hopefully. And three points and taking the lead into the break is something that I think you would look as an encouragement to. And also you would have your most points in a contest in the last three games. So that's got to also be something to hang your hat on, saying at least we got the offense clicking a little bit. But this will be an interesting formation. This looks like the Colts formation against the Patriots when they tried this. That did not fare well. Eagles hoping for a much better opportunity and option. They'll snap the ball. Majority of the players lined up to this near left sideline. And a quick timeout as you probably anticipated here from the Nor'easters, not really enjoying that setup at least, so they can discuss in case they do see this in the future. I think that was mostly an attempt to try and draw them off sides, but you never really know. Offsides penalty only would have given them five yards, so it still would have been fourth and one, but at least it would have been a more manageable fourth down opportunity. Yeah. But very interesting look. <laughs> you well, don't see that very often. It is funny, though. You remember the, the infamous play back in the NFL where it was the Indianapolis Colts doing that, and it looks like they were trying to draw an offsides call as well, but, of course, they snapped the ball, and we remember the rest. And it was not pretty, especially for Pat McAfee. <laughs> I think he still remembers that to this day very vividly. So it will be a field goal opportunity, and it looks to be about 25 yards for parity. He does have one field goal on the season. And it was from 33 yards, so this will be a little shorter for him. He was hitting these pretty consistently. And the warm-ups, this one from the right hash. And another timeout will be called here. As the Nor'easters realize you can't take them with you, they'll take their third and final one of the half. This crowd was really getting into it for both sides. The press box started to shake a little bit there. Pretty sturdy up here at least. Rests my head and uh, puts my mind at ease a little bit. <laughs> so depending on how this kick works, either the Eagles will take a three point lead and then kick it off to the Nor'easters with minimal time left on the clock. Or at least the University of New England will have a long road to hoe and a long way to progress to get up into even a manageable field goal space. And with only 11, 10 seconds left on the clock. That's not going to fare well for them. Well, the Eagles look like they were going to line up in that formation again, instead go back into a more traditional field goal opportunity. Play clock has started. It's down to 20 seconds. Parity going through his progressions. Here's the snap. And that one's going to be hey, offsides. offsides. Nor'easter's players are celebrating, but they definitely reached around that corner a little too quick. And I don't that think was that was I indicative of a Husson Eagle player moving either. No, definitely not. Uh, Nick Lombard on the outside on the left-hand side really just jumped very early and almost got to the, to the kicker before the snap was there. So now you have the question here if you're Coach Nat Clark. Do you maybe try a fourth and one here? With, with how he's been, I would say he does. It's a long one, but it's still a manageable one. Puts the ball on the three yard line. Even with the running backs crew and core decimated, you have to feel fairly confident in Lober that he could pick up the four yards necessary. And Lober's been fighting for it a lot recently. You Especially do have just seven there. seconds though, and one timeout. Well, it looks like they'll just take the field goal opportunity, this time just being a 21-yard opportunity as opposed to 26. New, new snapper in there for the Eagles, by the way. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is up, and it is through. And the Eagles will take the lead into the halftime break, unless something crazy happens in the last four seconds of the half. But a nice kick there, perfectly executed, and a nice progression down the field for their second scoring drive of the day. And, and a good snap by, I believe that was Walker Lenz They're filling in. Usually Ryan Rometta, the backup quarterback, does the long snapping duties for the Eagles. But he's out for this game. 
Yeah, Walker saw Lenz. a lot of low snaps coming out yeah. in warm-ups for Walker Lenz, but good snap there. And that was another reason why I was thinking maybe that they would try to go for it on the fourth and one, but probably a wise move from Nat Clark, who knows more about the game of football than I ever will. He's probably forgotten more, too. Now the Eagles just need to basically do the procedure of kicking this ball off. And then maybe one knee down or maybe one run, and then we're heading to the halftime break. It'll be Parity who will be kicking this one off. Back to receive our report in Mahoney. Here's the kick. It's a deep one. Pick that one up as Laporte, and he's just going to knee that one in the end zone for a touchback. So four seconds will be on the clock after that kickoff. And I can't imagine we'll see much more than either that knee or that run right up the middle for the Nor'easters. It's just not enough time to really let anything happen, and you don't want to run the risk of running a deep shot. Especially in a deep shot, you can really pick it off, run it right back. Exactly. At least in college football, you have the option of going down and don't have to worry about the player having to come back up. So once they're down on the turf, they're down. But still, you don't want to even give that opportunity. So you have to imagine a snap safe formation and a quick knee down and kneel down for an alt here to end the first half. And that will exactly be the case. And no extracurriculars after the play. So we played 30 minutes here from the Dr. John W. Winkin Sports Complex, and it'll be the Hudson Eagles with a 10-7 lead in this Lobster Trap game, second annual. Eagles looking to make it 2-0 in this rivalry matchup, but Zethan, just your thoughts for the first 30 minutes before we maybe attempt for some statistics here at the halftime break. Well, really a lot of simplicity on both sides of the ball. There's not a lot of trickery, lot of, not a lot of complex plays going on. That's really what's been working for both teams. You know, for the, for the Nor'easters, that run game has proved very well. And for the Eagles, really looking outside, Dom Wilson, Tyler Thompson really stepping up, especially with now Jordan Marcano out, it appears to be. Jed Lober has stepped up well. And that's the one thing I want to give kudos to this Husson Eagles rushing attack. They have been, not decimated, but they have been dealing with a lot of injuries in, in particular. We knew... Elijah Garnett would not be playing in this contest with that knee injury. And he has accounted for almost, what, almost <laughs> 80%? <all of> it. <laughs> yeah, 80% plus of their rushing attack. And so far, Hudson's done a decent job on the ground, already a rushing touchdown in this contest. So a good start to the game in this matchup. And Eagles looking for their first conference win, and they will take the three-point lead into the halftime break. With that, though, we will take a break ourselves here as we are at the half on the Husson Eagles Sports Network, and it is Husson 10, New England 7. We'll come back with a little bit more here for you in just a bit, here from Bangor. Right now, the 
Hassan makes it a priority of theirs to make sure each of their students are well-rounded and that we're prepared to go into the future. I mean, it's very rare to have a college that can emphasize the professor-student interaction, and Hassan hits it right on the head. Instead of just you know sitting in the classroom, it's a great way to get hands-on experience. I'm actually out here doing things and seeing how things work. After being here and meeting the people, I decided this is where I wanted to be, that there was no better option for me. Settling is all about relationships and building trust. At Greenway, it's our people that have built the business. We're fortunate to have a team with years of experience. They know John Deere equipment inside and out and go the extra mile to take care of our customers. And right now is a great time to talk to one of us about a new tractor. Get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor. Nothing runs like a deer. From Greenway Equipment Sales, family owned and operated since 1994. And we are back from Bangor at the campus of the University or Hudson University as we have a Colonial or a Commonwealth Coast Conference uh, clash here. And it's also the Lobster Trap game. It's a rivalry matchup between the University of New England and Hudson University. And right now at the half, it is 10 to 7, Eagles on top of the Nor'easters. Brian Stackpole and Zethan Moss with you. Executive producer Tyler Huey. And also, we have a good an incredible camera operator today. Want to give a shout out to Sam Johnson doing a great job on the camera as well. But let's look at some first half stats here, Ethan. And uh, the thing that's really stood out to me so far is even with the lack of depth in the rushing game, Huston's doing a pretty good job running the ball. Yeah, 173 net yards. A lot of that is actually coming from Nick Visser, the quarterback. You know, six, six scrambles for, I believe, 58 yards. So several big gains coming on, on the legs of Nick Visser. And another thing I want to point out is the time of possession. Yes. Hassan has absolutely dominated 21 minutes of possession of a total 30. So very big for Hassan coming out of really a tough stretch against Springfield and Endicott. Yeah, outscored 69-7 to seven the last two weeks, but right now with a three-point lead, while we have a moment, I do want to thank our sponsors for today's game. Performance PT, designing a healthier you. Greenway Equipment Sales in Ellsworth and Bangor, nothing runs like a deer. Governor's Restaurant, and also Casella, giving resources new life. If you're looking for some things to work on, maybe for the Husson Eagles, penalties have been a little bit of thorn in the side for them. But also, in addition to that, too, two very, not costly turnovers, but costly in terms of it probably took points off the board for them as they were both on the northeaster side of the field at the time that they occurred. Yeah, absolutely. The Eagles, seven penalties for 56 yards, and that hurts in the first half, especially when you're only gaining 50, or sorry, excuse me, about 200 yards in that first half. A lot of penalty yardage is going to stack up and hurt. Absolutely. So we'll keep an eye on that as we move forward. The Hudson Eagles team trying to get the fan base in the mix. As we talked about earlier, it's a pretty mixed crowd. A lot of fans coming up from the southern part of the state of Maine to cheer on the Nor'easters here in this matchup. Again, the winner of this one will take home the Trap Trophy. Established last year, Hudson, of course, winning it in the inaugural debut of this rivalry for the Trap. This one is going to be picked up. It's going to be run out from about the two-yard line and then quickly thrown down at the 10. Hassan with some great kick coverage there will pin the Nor'easters back. Uh, I believe that was number 35, Evan Duranzel, just really splitting that coverage on special teams and lighting UNE up in the backfield. That was Shane Laporte on the return. So not the greatest of field position, but we've seen the pretty prolific offense that is the UNE side of things, so we'll see if they can continue to bring on the presence. So only seven points on the board for a team that averages over 30 points per game. It's really not quite what we've expected in terms of the offense. I think a lot of that comes with the turnovers, but still offense is rolling well. Jordan is in the backfield along with 
Hinault, but a quick pass over to Shane Laporte. And a pretty good reception and gain there for Laporte. Enough to move the chains here in a first down on first down. Jordan in the backfield again. Laporte will now shift from that far side of the field as they've now switched up ends, of course, and they'll be going from left to right, UAD will, here in this quarter, wearing their road white uniforms with the blue pants. Hanult, hand off to Jordan, sneaks through that by the tackle on the right side, and then is going to be taken down. Good play there defensively for the Eagles to get there quickly in the backfield. Adam Bertrand finding that outside. Great play. Really off the tackle, too, off, off the left tackle, or excuse me, the, yeah, the right tackle. Eric Lagland. Langland. 13.54 left to go in this third quarter. Again, Jordan behind Hanault, who's in the shotgun formation. He'll now line up to his left side. Two wide receivers to the left of Hanault, one single to the right. This will be a quarterback keeper after the Big handoff, and again, Hanalt going absolutely nowhere. And this Husson defense, in particular on the line, has really, really stepped up their game here to start the second half. Tucker Buzzle again coming up the middle and really reading that play well. Promised to Quacha on, on that left side, number 97. Thought, thought that, along with myself, thought that it stayed with Eugene Jordan in the backfield for a long time. One thing I have noticed is that really good play action even on those desired runs, just to kind of get a little misdirection here. But a big third down opportunity here for the Husson defense to get this UNE offense off the field. Hanal dealing with some pressure, has a ton of time in the pocket, throws over the middle, but not complete. As that was intended for De, uh, DeFilio. AJ unable to get his hands on that one firmly, so it will now be fourth down and long. And the punt team will be out here for a rare appearance for UNE. Lots of pressure coming in from that right side. Again, that's promised to Quacha. And just let him a little bit behind his receiver, AJ DeFilio. Bell back to receive this punt. A dot out there for the second time today. First time in the second half with 12.58 left to go in the third quarter. Husson still on top, 10 to 7. Looking to add on after this punt. It's a clean, but it's not. Actually, it might have been deflected a little bit. It bounces towards around the 43-yard line of UNEs before finally going out of bounds. So not the punt they were looking for. This Eagle player having a little trouble getting up off the ground, off the turf, but seems to be okay as he's walking off under his own power. Got a lot of pressure. I think he just maybe got the laces on it or something. Didn't look like it was tipped, but... Very short kick for him. The way it looked like it, it looked like it had to have been, but it didn't really actually get tipped from my knowledge points, at least off the naked eye. But not a great kick nonetheless. So great field position for the Husson Eagles this time through as they'll start the ball in the UNE 42. Here's the snap, Visser, handoff. Lober gets a couple yards on the game, right up the middle, up the gut on the left side of the center. Lober's been really stepping up so far, doing a lot of the carrying for the Eagles for the rushing. Obviously with Marcano going out early in the game and Garnett still out for this game. Been really stepping up very well, especially for a freshman. Two wide receivers to the right side of Visser. Hand off play action, he's gonna take it himself. Gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like he might actually have lost a yard. As again, the pocket collapsed very quick as Visser was just trying to get a little bit more room to find a wide receiver on the sideline. That left side of the line, Hayden Fielder, Damon Reynolds, has had a lot of trouble dealing with the blitz from UNE, especially on this, this time around, Will Peters and Cameron Crocker came through. Big third down, third down and eight. They want to go for the fourth down. They want to pick up at least a few yards to make it a manageable fourth down opportunity. Visser gets the snap for the shotgun. Pocket collapsing again. Finds his wide open wide receiver. That's Russ Walker who's going all the way in. Is he out of bounds? He'll actually step out quite a bit earlier. Maybe down by the 15 yard line. Walker looked like he was gonna get the score but alas, just did not tiptoe efficiently enough down the line and will be stopped at the 15. 
Yeah, like you said, just tiptoeing right along the sideline. And yes, it looked like he did step out right around the 15. Officials today, right there on the spot, are able to see that efficiently. It is enough for the first down, so more importantly, he'll stay here with the Eagles and not bring up a fourth down opportunity. Ball's currently stated on the 15. Visser trying to find some space. Again, the pocket collapses in. Even as he tries to shift on the right side of the line to get some space, he's quickly brought down, and that'll be about a three, four-yard loss on the play. Will Peters on the sack again coming through that left side. Uh, Hayden Fielder, left tackle for the Eagles. A little bit too much to handle. Very quick on that rush. Second and 14 now. Ball on the 19 of UNE. And 10.38 left to go in the third quarter here. Again, Eagles on top by three, looking to add on. The wind has shifted a little bit here, heading a little bit more towards us than it was to start the game. Still a beautiful day here in Bangor, nonetheless, as the sun continues to bear down. Not an Arius cloud in the sky. Visser sneaks it up the middle, more of a design play this time through. He'll pick up the yards lost and maybe an extra one on top of that one. So the clock continues to tick down as we get closer and closer to the under 10 minute mark in the third. It'll be a third and nine, ball on the 14 yard line of UNE. Eagles bench starting to get loud, more vocal here from this sports complex, aptly named after the legendary baseball coach. This one incomplete. Looked like it was going to be a completion. I don't think he made enough of a football move to have that be designated as such. So instead it'll be a fourth and long. And we'll see if they bring out the kicking crew this time through. That was Ryan Turner on the coverage right on Dom Wilson. And it looked, it, like you said, it looked like it was going to be complete, but not quite enough there. Uh, Ryan Turner just punching it out, ripping it out. This will be around a 31-yard field goal attempt here. Already one up through, it's just over 20 yards for parity. Looks to put this team up. So this will be the longest attempt so far for him of the contest. This one's up and it looks like it's gonna be wide left as he pulled it a little bit, lined up in a favorable position but unable to get that one through the uprights. So we'll switch over to UNE with 9.36 left to go in the third quarter. Again, the wind just shifted a little bit, but it died down for that kick. So I think he overcompensated a little bit too much on that. He had already hit so far in the contest, as I was alluding to, it was officially a 21-yard field goal late into the, sec in the first half in the second quarter, with just seconds left on the clock. He also has a long of 33 on the season, but this time through, two yards shorter, unable to get it through. That stings a little bit for the Eagles, a very good-looking first drive. But again, trust that defense came away with a very, almost a very easy stop on that opening possession for the Nor'easters. Now Tass with trying to do it again. Nor'easters will take the ball on their own 20 yard line. Eagles fans below us imploring their team to bring on the defense much like we saw last time afforded. Quick handoff to Mahoney. He breaks through the right side of the line, takes a quite a big hit, but spins and trucks through for a couple more yards. Great intensity there from the young man. The five foot nine grad student picks up a pretty decent gain on first down. Very impressive run. Took a huge hit from the safety Parker La France, coming right up the middle, reading that play very well, but again able to work through all that contact for a nice gain. Not a ton of rushing yards in general for the UNE offense in the first half. Trying to establish a little bit more here on the second drive of this half. Nine minutes left to go in the third. Mahoney moves from the right side to the left side of Hanal. They fake over a little bit of a pass. Instead, they pass it this near sideline. No problem there for Mikey Brennan. He'll move the chains. Goes out around the 45-yard line. Had number 19, Josh Ladipo on him. Looked a little bit lost in that coverage. Ladipo was expecting something a little bit deeper and, and obviously he worked off of his man very well. Alex Brown was on him to start off and transitioned over the middle. So a new set of downs here, ball on the 43 yard line officially on UNE's side of the field. Hand off to Mahoney, slowed down right at the line and tries to go around the tackle 
and is met with a slew of green jerseys, and that'll be a loss on the play. Again, Parker LaFrance coming up on that right side. Played very well at the safety spot for the Eagles this year. So just over eight left now here in the third. Be about a loss of maybe an inch or two. Get rightfully back to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers set. Jordan now in in the backfield along with Hanul. QB will roll out. Brennan to this near sideline. Gets to around the 50. Then down over around the 45 yard line into Husson territory. Be close to first down. Actually, I think they'll give him the first down marker here. Just over the line to gain. So a new set of downs. And now they're in the Husson Eagles territory. UNE fans are loving this drive so far, and I can't say that they're wrong. Just really look very clean. Good reads all around, and the run game's rolling. Seems like they're the most confident they have since that first drive of the game, which resulted in a rushing touchdown. Hanult looking for somebody. It's going to be Brennan again. And in another eight-yard completion here to the near sideline, right in front of the Husson Eagles roster. Again, Brennan part of that really triple-headed receiving monster for UNE. He's been more of the, the touchdown guy, leading the way with four, but been getting a lot of yardage in this one, especially on that outside, right on that edge. Get in shotgun formation is Hanol. Mahoney back in the contest, lined up directly behind him. Two wide receivers to the far side left. Another handoff, this time to Mahoney. Gonna be enough for the first down, but not much more, maybe another yard or so, because he gets to around the Husson 35. and E fans really loving it. <laughs> Not often do you see at the opposing stadium for a team to a loud chant for the opposition. That's the case here. The Nor'easters really coming in droves here with their fan base. A lot of blue down below us. Here's the snap. Fake hand off to Mahoney oh, and uh, probably should have handed it off as the water goes flying from the Husson bench is a large, large tackle for loss here. Sends them back deep into the midfield at around the 47 yard line or the uh, 43 yard line lots of pressure by almost all the eagles on that line but i believe that was number 35 evan deronzel coming in and getting that sack outside linebacker 5-1 166 sophomore 546 left to go in the third second and 18 and now it's going to pass this one but a quick little screen over to the sideline Gets about 9, 10 yards back all the way to the 30-yard line before finally being forced out of bounds and setting up now a fairly reasonable third down opportunity. Probably also in, I would say, probably four down area as well. Yeah, and for the tight end, that's the reception went to number 19, Jack Piller, 6'2", th 6 two, 230. That's exactly what you want to do. Quick little dump off to him. He got a lot of yardage, made it more manageable in this third down situation. Third and five on the Husson 30. 5.13 left to go in the third. Nalt looks over to his sideline trying to get some more clarity on the play as they switch it up at the line. Three wide receivers set with two lined up to this near side right. It's going to be a designed run. Hanolt though is going nowhere. He's spinning his wheels and brought down back on the play. And another great break through the line by the Eagles defensive line and linebacking core. Again, Tucker Bazell leading the way for this defense heading into this one. Again, 59 tackles on the season. And there's another huge one for a loss. Average coming in just a tick below 12 tackles per contest, leading the conference in that regard. Set the program record a few weeks ago with 17 on the game. Fourth down and five, they're going for it here. Again, right back at the 30 yard line of the Eagles. And all looks to the left. And that one's going to be tipped at the line. It'll be a turnover on downs as the defense for Husson, after a slow start to this drive, picks it up in spades and now will take over. And who else but Tucker Vazell coming through the line, getting that tip. And if he didn't get it away, that would have been another sack for him. So another big stand from the defense. And now Husson, who felt a little empty on their last offensive opportunity, now will have the chance to put some more points on the board leading by just three. 
So again, this defense has been pretty solid all year, really stepping it up in this one, making sure UNE does not get the momentum in their favor. 4-16 left to go in the third quarter. 10-7 our score. Hudson looking to add on here. Two in the backfield along with Visser. This one quickly stopped. Again on the running play from Lober, but going nowhere in a hurry. And he actually loses his helmet. We'll have to get a substitute into the contest for him. And again, the running back core a little light, so it'll be LeVar Hunter, the sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, stepping in. Again, Lober has had a little bit of a struggle going on that outside. He's usually met by Nick Lombard, who's been leading this UNE team in defense so far. Fake handoff, again, Visser's going deep. Has a step, almost gets the completion as it looked like an easy touchdown for Bell as he had nothing but real estate in front of him. He had beaten the defensive back but just cannot come down with that one as it careens off his hands. That one was placed beautifully right in his hands, right in the bread basket, but can't quite bring it in. And that is, that's tough. And you could just see the disappointment in his face even from up here all the way across the field. Knew he had an easy touchdown if he could just come up with it. Again, had beaten his corner that was playing him very closely, using his speed, and the afterburners were there. Yeah, like you said, Ryan Turner had pressed up, and, and John Bell just flew right by him. Here's Visser looking this near sideline. He'll make that completion. No problem there. And actually staying on his feet and getting some more yards, and then all the way to the 40 into UNE territory. Then the ball might have trickled out, but it doesn't matter. Huston still has it. And what a great play, a pass and catch there by Walker Lenz. Walker Lenz getting his first action offensively. Again, filled in for a long snapper. And getting a little bit of action. Great, great carry by him. And now get a breather and a well-deserved congratulation. 29 yards though. Not a bad way to start the season, at least in the statistical category for him. So now lined up, 3.05 left to go in this third quarter of play. Eagles driving once more. Pass over the middle. Thompson gets that one through. It's going to go all the way through, and that's going to be six points on the board as the Eagles complete a beautiful pass play. A great spin move, and that's going to be six more as it's now 16-7, Husson on top. Well, the Eagles stuck with what was working on that drive. A lot of passing, only a couple of rushes. Again, Jed Lober on that first play, but... Really sticking to that passing that's been working well for him, and you saw it there, Tyler Thompson breaking a tackle and then finding that open field with the safeties pressed up. And the Winkin is roaring. It's a great atmosphere and a great third quarter so far for the Eagles, looking to make it a 10-point advantage. It'll be the first time any team has had a 10-point lead in this contest. So it was a fairly low-scoring affair, um, not what we anticipated after seeing the first two drives. This one up, this one true and through. And it is a 17-7 lead with just under three to play in the third. Again, you see that tail of the tape has really been the possession for the Eagles, and they've gotten a lot of opportunity to really see this defense. And you saw it pay off there. Again, finding Tyler Thompson over the middle for that really almost an easy touchdown once he breaks through his defenders. Really weren't sure what to anticipate with this game. Again, Husson winning the matchup last year. A relative new program with UNE. But the Nor'easters came into the contest with a 1-0 record. But they did beat Curry. But Curry was the preseason um, number 7 out of 7 team. So you really didn't know how what to expect from this UNE team. Maine, by the way, took on one of the top preseason teams in the conference and lost by 20. But uh, right now the Eagles looking like the better team at least. But still a lot of time left on the clock here. Around 18 minutes left to go in this one. Yeah, the Eagles have been really hit or miss this year. You see a lot of... A lot of good things against tough teams and then a lot of really not so great great things against some usually easy teams. So the Eagles up and down year trying to find their stride late in the season. It's trying to get their team on track and so far so good in this one. Good kickoff goes to around the one yard line and then that has to get picked up. Did not bounce into the end zone. Luckily for the UNE side of things, they're able to salvage a decent return there from Laporte. The sophomore was able to turn something out of nothing. Yeah, that, that ball was really knuckleballed and kind of just spun around right there on the first, the one and two yard lines and stayed in. 
Laporte was able to turn that around well, though. Very talented returners for both sides, whether it's Laporte or Bell for the Hassan perspective. 2.46 left to go in the third, and we'll see on the third drive for the UNE Nor'easters what they can do. It looks like Jordan in the backfield with Hanol. Just one wide receiver on either side for the Nor'easters here. It'll be a handoff for Jordan. Stopped at the line, second chance effort as he kept churning his legs. Allows him to get maybe a, a gain of one or two on the play. Toby Jakubowski, I believe, on that, that tackle. Time continues to tick off the clock. Sun has worked its way towards the sidelines a little bit here, setting off in the distance. Still a lot of daylight left in this contest, and this day as well. Starting to see some shadows creep onto the field. Now the rollout to the left side. Hanalt on the run, gets the completion. And that one is going to be close to a first down. DeFilio gets the reception again. I believe his first one of the second half. And for UNA, they really have to find something that's going to work. This defense for the Eagles have, has met almost everything they've thrown at them in the second half and to end, end that first half. They've held up well. So you really have to find whatever holes this defense has, if it has any at the moment. And it's not like UNE's offensive drives here in the second half have been, have been bad or poor. They just got stopped at the worst possible time in that fourth down with a tip pass. Another Eugene Jordan run off the left side of the line. Pretty good gain on first down, picking up about half the yardage. Getting closer and closer to Husson territory on the field. Is there a right position at around the 47? The defense chance erupts down below us with just 63 seconds left on the clock in the third. 17 to seven the score. Hand off to Jordan again, stopped in the backfield, but gets over through the line just a tad bit. Is able to gain maybe a yard on the play. Promised to Quacha, made that tackle. Again, Tucker Buzzle coming up the middle. Almost got to him in the backfield. That would have been a spectacular play. So now third and four. They need to get to the Hudson Eagles 48-yard line. Three wide receivers in trip formation on the far side of the field. Single wide out lined up to the near right sideline. They'll elect instead to try to go to the running back out of the backfield, which was actually, I think that was Brennan, wasn't it, lined up? Looked like it. Oh, actually, I beg your pardon. Number four. Jameson Mayhew, I believe. Tried to lay it right in. It was almost quite, almost right into his hands. But again, lots of pressure coming for the Eagles. So it'll be another punt formation, third time today that they'll punt this one away. Clock has stopped at 23 seconds, and again, Bell back to receive. Currently positioned around his own 15-yard line. Again, a short punt last time. This one a much better, wobbly one, and Bell's wisely gonna let that one bounce, but great coverage though. And he's gonna down this one inside the five for the Eagles, so it'll be a long field to traverse right around the three yard line. Very good special teams coverage on that one. I believe that was Jamison Mayhew again coming up and stopping and downing that ball. So likely just one play before we head into the fourth. It's a 10 point lead for the Eagles, but a precarious situation for them backed up against their own end zone. Eagles offense trots back on the field. You have to play a little careful here and you're protecting a nice lead and you wanna keep it, you wanna limit the mistakes. I think we see a lot more running or short passes on this drive. Yeah, the other thing you don't wanna do is do a quick out maybe on a screen pass and get it intercepted for six because not a lot of long distance to go to get that score. Definitely not. A little bit of a, more of a closed up formation here for the Eagles. Visser in his own end zone here on the snap from shotgun. He's gonna hand it off right to the back and not a problem. Lober has a little bit of yardage gained here. Gets about three or four on the play. 
gives him a little bit of room to work with in terms of the pass. Whistles will be blown. It's the end of the third quarter, and it's Hudson with a 10-point lead through three quarters in the books. We'll come back in just a moment with fourth quarter action. It's Hudson 17, UNE 7 on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. If you want a place where you can be seen as an individual and know what you're doing and have a career to look forward to, this is your place. Back here in Bangor, the campus is the Hudson University Eagles. Right now it's Hudson on top, 17 to seven. As we switch fields, Hudson now will be moving from right to left, or left to right across your screen. <laughs> Takes me a second. Brian Stackpole and Zethan Moss with you. Here on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network, quick pass out. It's gonna be a decent gain here for Cullen. Casey, as he gets over, pass to around the 30 yard line when all is said and done, just short of that but a pretty nice gain on a play that looks like it was going to be just minimal yardage at, from the get-go. Again, something like that, a little dump off to the tight end on the outside, you don't really expect a big gain. But, you know, he's, he's got some shiftiness. He's got a little bit of quickness. You see a lot of that with the likes of Darren Waller in the NFL. Cullen listed at 6'1", 220. Sophomore with a nice run there. Just giving some more breathing room, more importantly, too, for Visser and company. And the name of the game here is looking for one more score and eat some time off the clock. It's going to be a snap over. Lober gets the direct snap, I believe, actually. He gets around to the 30-yard line. So a gain of three, on, three or four on the play there. Made a couple of men miss early in the backfield. Uh, Will Michaud coming on the outside almost got him in the backfield, but again, made a miss. Turned it into a little gain. Again, the Eagles taking their time here, talking things over. Play clock down to 20 seconds now. Game clock down to 13.50. Eagles will wait for a little bit more time off the clock, but then we see the flag on the play, and I think a legal procedure on the Eagles. So another procedural penalty on the Eagles will back them up. And just as they had seemingly started to progress and start finding their form on offense and not have a penalty for a little while, then it rears its ugly head once more. Yeah, and that's been the main issue for the Eagles this year, especially on offense, is, is once they get the ball rolling, so to speak, it's, it's always a penalty that stalls a drive. It's either a penalty or a turnover. So those costly mistakes, they've been limiting so far here in the second half. So they're back at second and 12. Quick pass out to Lober. Lober sneaks back towards the middle of the field, and he's going to be close to a first down after an 11-yard pass and catch. There's a free blitzer on that play, almost getting to Nick Visser in the backfield. That's Trey Snowden, defensive back. Looked like the defensive end, Dom Petey, or Petty, looked a little banged up on the play. It'll be third and one here for the Eagles. Fake handoff, roll out. Here's the pass over. Not a problem for Casey again, who jukes and jives over there. Has the intensity, little jawing between the two teams, but another first down for Hassan. Colin Casey just very good, like I said. He's got some shiftiness and some speed and made a couple men miss again there. Here, it reminds you of a slot receiver or some variants of that with uh, the New England Patriots, but has some size too. Absolutely. 
He's got a little Julian Edelman in, but a, a little bit more tight or a little bit more height with him as well. So definitely another weapon here for Visser and company. 12.15 left on the clock. This one's going to be a run up the middle. Visser lucky to just get right back to the line of scrimmage at the 50. Anthony Cristoforo came in on the right, or the left side, excuse me. And I believe he was on a blitz, but he's able to get to Visser before he can turn it into a gain. And Visser has been really good on his legs so far in this game. Six rushes in the first half with 58 yards. Three wide outs on that far side left. Here's the pass from Visser. He's going deep. He's got Bell. Does he catch it? No, it pops out again the second time here in this half. It's been right in the hands of Bell, and at this time it pops out on a good defensive effort, just kind of poking it away from the defensive backs for UNE. Hit from behind right at the perfect time. I believe that was Wilma showed on the coverage. Coming in from behind, Bell usually very good with his hands, and that ball security popped out a couple of times now. But great throws by Visser has really just put it in a place where Bell can make a play. He is so frustrated, too, just seeing him on the sidelines as he'll get a breather. Clock will also stop at 11.33 left to go in this contest. Bell thinks to himself he's had two touchdowns that he's just unable to come down with. Instead, here's a quick pass out to the side on the far sideline. And that is going to be enough for a first down after a second opportunity after the hit. And another chain moved for the Husson Eagles offense. I believe that was Evan Williams. That reception. Nice game there for Evan Williams, and even better work after being touched by the defender. Able to move through. Clock continuing to tick again, now at 11 10 left. Eagles looking to add on to their 10 point advantage as the, core, the score currently sits at 17 7. Quick out here to this near sideline. Little juke move quickly back and then out and tackled it around the 35 yard line at UNE. Again, Evan Williams on that reception. So Williams doing a good job out there for the Eagles. Sophomore from Lewiston, Maine. One thing you see a lot of is the Maine high school football players that then again try to move to the next level with this Eagles program. Same thing with UNE as well. Great stars from Friday night football now, applying their trade on Saturday afternoons. Here's a snap to Visser. The handoff, Lober lowers the shoulder again and gets some additional yardage, which will bring some cheers and some jeers from the Husson bench. That was some pretty tough contact. We heard that all the way up here. And that's the reason I'm up here. <laughs> Wouldn't want to take a hit from Jed Lober, 205 from Bello Falls, Vermont. Just down the road from me, about about an hour, an hour south of where I'm from. Yeah, they, uh, they build some pretty good football players in that neck of the woods, it seems. Oh, absolutely. You got Aiden Hogan again, came through this this program, graduated last year, huge tight end, out of Vermont. Both teams rarely represented here, the state of Vermont. Third down and two, quick pass over the sideline, not a problem again, and another first down. Pinwheel, pinwheel down there for the moment. But another pass reception for Thompson, who moves the chains. I believe there's actually Caleb Solomon, a freshman tight end. 6'3", 195 out of Holton. So be a lot of reps in all around the board for everybody today. Yeah, seeing some new faces for sure for both teams, more predominantly with the Hudson Eagles dealing with some of their injuries. But everyone really producing here today. You know, it's always so hard to step up, especially if you're not planning on it, in the case of Jeb Bober. But everyone's really filling in those holes well. Speaking of Lober, he gets the handoff, cuts through the left side of the line, past the tackle, and a pretty good gain there, about eight yards. Then a late flag here. I wonder if that might be a hit. Doesn't look like it's in the position of holding, so I would have to assume it must be concerning the hit at the end. I didn't see anything from my point of view, but obviously the referees down on the field, they have something different, and that's why they're paid to do what they do. Hustle, though, backing up already on the play. Their offense, we'll see what the official call is. It 
So it was an illegal, illegal block in the back. About to say, it wasn't in a position of holding by any means because a little further away from the actual play. The Eagles will be backed up once more here. Still a pretty nice drive as we're under the 10 minute mark left to go in this contest. Yeah, the Eagles had a couple penalties early on, but they've fought through them this time, which has been the main issue, is, is fighting through the mistakes. Be first and 14. A little bit of pressure. Dump back over to Lober. Lober's going to be immediately tackled right back at the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and 14 now. It's maybe a minimal gar yardage gain of, well, not even yardage gain, I guess a gain of maybe a foot on the play, if that. Good play by Visser to really loft it over the defense. Again, free blitzer coming in, Trace Snowden on that left side of Visser, and just lofted it over, found Jeb Bober. 8.27 left to go in this contest. Eagles looking to add on to their lead, currently residing at 10 points. Again, Visser in the shotgun, goes to the right side this time through. That one's going to be complete to Walker. Walker's going to break through that first tackle and continue all the way inside the 20, down to the 12-yard line. And another first down for the Eagles, who are again on the cusp of yet another score. Russ Walker's been pretty quiet today in comparison to other games. But again, finding his stride a little bit with, with the amount of personnel the Eagles are getting some play time in. So this ball will be actually on the 14-yard line of UNE. Setting up this first down opportunity. Colin Casey, by the way, just checked in for Walker. Lober gets the handoff, stumbles a little bit, but gets over the 10-yard line before finally being brought down at around the nine. Eagles have been fruitful in the red zone so far today. Three trips, three scores, which has been a little bit off par for the course. Yeah, the only things you could look at and say maybe a little room for improvement, the field goal miss at around 31-yard attempt. Not necessarily in the red zone opportunities, but uh, then that interception They've had a couple opportunities here. The fumble could have been a lot larger of a margin as the Eagles look for their first conference victory of the season. Under seven to play. Again, Lober in the backfield. Play action. And that's going to be another touchdown as, as Casey just barrels through the defensive back for the score. Colin Casey with another six for the Eagles. That drive was really just Colin Casey's from the get-go. Again, that big gain on the on the left side, finding about 18 yards, working through a lot of contact, and again, coming on the right side for another 20 yards or so, and a great touchdown for him, not afraid, a little bit of contact. And he just barreled over Nick Lombard, 6'3", 210. Not afraid. I was about to say, Lombard's had a couple of opportunities here to tag a few Eagle players, so I think there was a little bit of a receipt coming through. And Colin Casey put the dot on the exclamation point and there's the dot on the extra point as well. So it'll be 24 to seven, Eagles on top with just 6.47 remaining. And the time, it's becoming very, very tight for the UNE comeback. And the UN, UNE can certainly string together a very good drive, uh, especially deep. They have a couple plays long on the year to 75, 74 yards. I uh, saw that looking over stats. So they can certainly do it, it's in them. Just going to work very quickly here. Six forty-seven left to go. Eagles eating almost eight and a half minutes off the clock for that drive. What a great drive, too, for the Eagles. Just getting confirmed it was 8 minutes and 26 seconds. So really eating a lot of time off the clock there were the Husson offensive side of things. And that's exactly what you want to do. Not leave a whole lot of time for a comeback. And again, this defense has been showing up really well, so trust them. This one's going to be a short kick right around the 16-yard line. It's picked up by Laporte. Gets a little space and actually makes that a lot more positive than I anti initially anticipated. It's still around the 32-yard line, and that's where the drive will start. Now the question here, Ethan, is I'm going to have to wonder 
we're going to see a little bit more deeper opportunities here. Or, or if you're if you're a coach of UNE, Mike Lichten, if, are you just trying to continue your offense like it had been progressing when you've been su successful with some quick outs to the outside? I think you really want to try and, and, and look like you're going for a quick out and, and really deceive that defense and maybe shoot them on some streak routes. You've got some quick guys. We'll see what they pull up with Hanal. With tons of time in the pocket, finally gets that one off. It's going to be complete to Laporte, all the way down to the 45-yard line, and up quickly into Hudson Eagles territory already. And Laporte has been very good for this, this UNE team, leading the team in all-purpose yards, 488. 239 of those are kick returns, and we saw that work well a little bit earlier, again, with that, that kick that stayed right at the goal line. And he's able to turn that into about a 35-yard return. Six minutes and change left on the clock. Score 24 to 7 in favor of the Eagles of Husson here in their conference matchup at home. The battle for the lobster trap. Quick pass off to Mahoney. Mahoney gets to the 30, down to the 25, almost at the 20 before finally being brought down. Another huge gain, though, on the first down opportunity for the Nor'easters. And you saw the, the three-headed monster for the you for the Nor'easters really stretch that defense and bring them back, give them a lot of cushion for Mahoney to work with. And you saw pay dividends with that game. 5.36 remaining. And oh, again in shotgun formation, Mahoney lined up to his left. Three wide receivers set. And Alt looks to his left. It's gonna be complete, and that's gonna be enough for another first down, it appears. As that one is complete there. To number two, Jacob Rivers, who I believe gets his first catch of the contest. Quick little sub in to give Shane Laporte a break, and he's put a lot of this Nor'easter's offense on his back in this game so far. So it'll be first and goal now for UNE. Ball placed at the Husson 8. Hanult with a running attempt. It was a design play all the way. He's going to be right near the goal line, and they're going to come in and say it's a touchdown. So not too shabby right there, I must say. Quickly working down the field, some pretty big plays. And with just under five minutes left, a very huge touchdown on the board for the Nor'easters. Very quick drive. Uh, really caught the defense off guard for the Eagles. I believe that was four plays. Brought it all the way downfield for the score. And that's really what you want to want to do at this point in the game. Obviously thread the extra point through and trust your defense to come away with a big stop. So an eight yard running touchdown there for Hanal. His second of the contest. And this gets it up and through. He's perfect two for two on PATs. And it's back to a 10 point game just like that. Both teams have their full allotment of timeouts and I imagine that UNE will be using some of those judiciously along the way. And probably still a little too early to do the onside kick. Just have to have faith in your defense, but Hassan and their ability to move the ball down the field, you have to imagine that they're feeling pretty confident in how they can work this. If you really wanted, you could try a little squib up the middle, see if they can mishandle it. Uh, but again, it's a little bit too early, like you said, to try something like that. Still just about, just under five minutes left on the clock. If your defense can come away with a big stop or a turnover, then you're back in business. Eagles fans hoping they're wrapping up that first conference victory, moving that record closer to 500 on the season. Again, they came into the contest with a 1-4 and four record. Success had not been there the last two days, but they've been looking much better here in this one. It's a very encouraging play through roughly the first 55 minutes. And it does look like they were going to go for the onside kick here, so evidently they do not trust their defense to be able to stop Husson. And I don't blame them. The way that Hassan's offense has been really just exploiting certain schemes in that defense, I'm not quite sure what Nat Clark has seen, but obviously he's seeing something and, and really using it. Well, it is going to be a, a two-score game regardless here currently, 24-14. to 14. By the way, Hassan did call their first time out of the half here, not being as prepared as they had liked on the onside attempt. Yeah, they were not expecting that onside attempt in the slightest, and obviously Nat Clark has to call a timeout to get his, his special teams up closer. A newfound rivalry between these two teams. Again, a newer program in the Northeast. 
from the University of New England and the Nor'easters. Yeah, like you said, new rivalry. Husson hasn't had a rival, really, after moving yeah. into the CCC. And obviously there's a little bit of rumor speculating about Maine Maritime getting a football team together. So that would provide another rival for this Eagles team. Eagles hoping to soar through the storm and pick up the victory in this rivalry matchup for the trap. Onside kick, gets over the 10 yards. What a great bounce. And I believe, yes, that is going to be recovered by Evan Williams, who I don't believe even played in the first half, but has had a couple rushes, I think a, a reception, and then a huge onside recovery. Almost getting there with Shane Laporte uh, coming, coming across really well and, and just mistimed his jump. He was a little bit early to get to that ball. So now you have to imagine, even with the depleted running core for the Husson Eagles, you're going to see a heavy dose of running plays here. With UNE still with their full allotment of timeouts, I also imagine they'll be calling those as quickly as possible in certain situations as the Eagles try to take up as much of this four minutes and 53 seconds left on the clock up and secure that victory. Yeah, and, and for the Eagles here, it's, it's really just all about securing that ball. Don't turn it over and run the clock out. Lober gets the handoff. Gets about two and a half yards, just over the 45-yard line. Eagles start this drive already in Nor'easter territory. So the ball will be lined up on the 44-yard line in the UNE side of the field. Eagles again taking as much time as possible. Play clock already down to 23 seconds. Interesting to see them not take the time out here and instead let the Eagles eat up a lot of time, which will eventually get down to almost four minutes left. Four wide out set. This one another handoff. Lober though is gonna be brought back. For almost a five yard loss. really just blew him up in the backfield. That's been a that's been a very strong point for this Nor'easter's team is that defensive line coming through quickly on a, a lot of these plays getting through this young offensive line for the Eagles and obviously take the first time out there. Now kind of trusting their defense a little bit more than initially after going for that onside kick. Well now the question becomes for Husson do you try to pick up the first down or do you again run it to try to either force UNE to get that other timeout to be called or take up another 40 seconds off the clock? What's more valuable at that point, 40 seconds or that last timeout or the second to last? I think really that 40 seconds because that timeout could come in big for UNE if they're putting together a couple of good drives. They put together a really good drive on that, that last possession for them. It didn't take up too much time off the clock, just about two minutes or so on that drive down the field for seven. Been Husson dominating possession in this game. Yeah, the first half it was jarring. Eye-opening to see the kind of amount of time that Husson had the ball to only be up by three points, but playing a much more lucrative in terms of scoring side of things in the second half were the Eagles. So the ball will be just on UNE's side of the field, right on around the 49-yard line. Shotgun formation again lined up for Visser. He's going to have a pass, and it's going to be again right off the hands of Bell, who just seemingly is having his worst struggles catching the ball of his career. Yeah, I mean, normally very good catching balls, really making some tough catches too, especially given his size. So it's it's... I'm not sure what's wrong, but clearly there's something that's, that's not quite right. And a big part about that drop, too, is it stops the clock at exactly four minutes. So no timeout needed to be used. And again, that wasn't the intention of the play. They thought it was a quick little slant. They were going to be able to get some yardage on the play, maybe get the first down. And that one's going to be blocked. Again, it's going to trickle all the way down to around the 27-yard line before finally down. And now here's a flag on the play, very, very late. I looked down to point out that Shane Laporte isn't in the back to receive that, and play got, gets blown up. Officials will huddle together, too. 
very late flag thrown. I also, too, looked down, but did hear the sound. Almost looked like they want to call Ruffin the kicker. Very bizarre holding penalty for a team that didn't return the ball, but alas, here we are. And worst field position here for the Nor'easters as they'll be backed to around their own 18-yard line. So a lot of distance for them to have to cover here just to get it within one score. Need to get at least a field goal or a touchdown on this drive to have any chance. And again, 82 yards they need to traverse here on this drive, at least for the touchdown. Alton in the back, lined up again like he has all day long in shotgun formation. The officials are a little out of position. They'll have to now get back and retreat into their normal spots. And now we're ready to get things underway. 3.49 left to go on the clock. Hassan up 24 to 14 in this one. Low snap to Hanal. Rolls out to his right side. He's got some space, he's gonna take it himself. He tucks it under, pushed out of bounds at around the 27 yard line. But a good yard gain of about eight or so. And the Nor'easters are going deep, they're looking very deep. And you see how, how far back these safeties are for Hassan. So it looks like he got a gain of nine on the play, so not a bad run there for Nall, but the clock will continue to click off. Now under 3.30 left to go. No, finally snaps his hands together, looking for a pass. Again, the pocket collapses. Now he's looking for a block. He streaks out oh, over to the sideline, finally pushed out of bounds on his own accord at the 40-yard line. So a good run. It'll get a first down. But again, not enough distance that, to really make up for the efforts. No, Hassan definitely have, ad have adjusted their defense after letting up just a very quick drive on that last possession for UNE. I've has, has adjusted for that. I mean, you see a lot of busted plays so far. Stepped out at the 36, clock was continuing to click off. Then the reception over there, and it's gonna be a little bit of a stoppage there, and then finally pushed out of bounds was Jacob Rivers for his second reception of the contest. And now an injury timeout will be called. It looks like the linebacker, or the uh, lineman, J.R. Nelson, dealing with some issues there. The center, 5'11", 290, the senior. So they're attending to him. Had a couple injuries in this contest too. 5'11 senior. Got a little work done there. And a nice, well-deserved breather for both teams too. Pressure has really been intensified here as of late. Austin Eagles trying to hold on to this win. UNE trying to make a desperate last chance opportunity to grab the trap. So far, the only trap for the Nor'easters is being trapped into thinking they could win that <laughs> heavy trophy. And that thing is a beast. <laughs> I did not try to lift it. Our executive producer, Tyler Huey, said, you got to try and see how heavy it is, because he had to do that along with Coach Nat Clark to get it back on the bus from Southern Maine, but just didn't want to touch it this time through. But someone's going to lift it after this one's done. 2.52 and, and counting. Yoni was not having to charge for a timeout like you do in NFL side of things. And Null just tucks it under. And then a late hit. Not sure if we see a flag on this near side. Looks like they kept it in the pocket. But that was a late hit on the QB. Or at least borderline on it. Not enough to warn anything, but... Nice run there back into Hudson territory. Adam Bertrand just laying down the law on the outside. It's never too late for something like that, especially if he's in play. Clock continuing to tick. Under 2.30 left. Quick dump off to Mahoney. He breaks through one track tackle, gets through the second, and still continues to spin the wheels up forward a little bit and into around the 35-yard line.
Two minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock here. They set the ball here. A little confusion on the offensive side of things for UNE. They'll finally get things set. Two minutes exactly left. 24-14. Hanalt throws this one away, almost completed. Looked like the Eagles were finally going to get another sack, their first one in the second half, but he just evades that on the throw. And Hanal has been beat up on this drive. Again, that's Tyreek Mann coming in to the defensive end spot on that, on that right side. Clock is stopped at a minute 54, second and 10, ball in the 35 in Hassan territory. Hanal gets the snap, looks over the right side. Throws it deep, but there's no one in the vicinity, and that's going to seal the deal on the victory for the Eagles as a huge interception, and now we see what the return can bring. Finally brought down at around the 45-yard line, and a huge interception. That's the second one of the contest for the Hudson Eagles, and that one pretty much seals the deal on this one. Parker LaFrance gets his second one of the year. His first one also sealed the deal against Alfred State at home here a couple weeks ago. Great feeling for the Eagles to come away. Again, they've had their struggles. They've had a few issues getting going this year. And this defense really, really showed up today. You saw it there, Parker LaFrance going up to get that, that ball. Well, I don't want to be too premature because there are two timeouts in the back pocket here for UNE. But a first down will pretty much do it for the Eagles who likely will be giving a heavy dose of running plays. And worst case scenario too, it's still a two score game for UNE. They would really have to move the ball down the field in a quick pace to get even just one. Again, still not totally out of reach, but. Ball security, out. a big thing here. Flag on the play after basically no yard gain by the run on Lober. See what the penalty is. Holding on the Eagles, so it'll be backed up just a little bit further. But it will be first down again. So the Eagles were at least able to eat a couple of seconds off the clock. If you're looking for silver linings, that is. Not too much to do for the Eagles on this one. Again, keep it simple, don't turn the ball over. And you've sealed the deal on this. Have to imagine UNE will call a timeout after this one. Eagles bench starting to get a little riled up. Starting to get loud too, realizing they'll likely pick up that first conference victory of the 2022 campaign. Lober again, runs right up the middle. Battles for a couple extra yards over the 40, and quickly a timeout called on the UNE, UNE sidelines. And again, this, this victory would mean a little bit more for the Eagles. Uh, again, those, those last two games not been very, very good at all, and, and now able to turn it around and, and secure a lobster trap. <laughs> Second year in the row. Yeah, you can get yourself some dinner with that, that oh, guy yeah. over there. But not just that, too, just as you alluded to, breaking that two-game losing streak would be such a huge thing for them, getting some confidence back, and also sending these hometown fans home happy, at least the ones residing from this part of the state. Yeah, like you said, we got a fairly even split between UNE fans and Hassan fans, and obviously a win would, would send the Hassan fans home happy. Again, Eagles have a nice homestand coming up for football, so looking to carry a lot of momentum going into that. As you alluded to after this game, they'll be heading on the road to take on Curry College, and then they'll be back for Friends and Family Weekend versus Western New England University. That game on the 29th, and then Nickel College on November 5th. Here's the snap, handoff, Lober, right over the middle. Actually, UNE, I think, was saying that he lost the ball, but uh, not the case. The officials 
will not grant that. The third and final timeout will be called by the Nor'easters to stop the clock one last time at 1.21 left to go in the contest. Oh, it's always worth a shot to try, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> not often have you seen the officials change their mind just because you point the other direction, but what's it, the it, it helps, right? It helps. Again, such a beautiful day here on this Saturday afternoon, and we really do appreciate you joining us here on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Brian Stackpole, Zethan Moss with you. Executive producer Tyler Huey and our camera operator Sam Johnson on board for today's coverage. Turf field looks spectacular again. Of course, a multi-purpose field for not only the Hudson baseball program, but also the football team as well. I believe we'll have field hockey a little bit later today on the field. Yeah, see those off in the distance. Another handoff, Lober. Tries to break through around. Looks like he's carrying a couple defenders that will duck down below. Will not get the first down, but it will pick up a couple yards on the play. More importantly, though, the clock will continue to tick away as we are right around the one-minute mark left to go in the contest. I think Lober is a very promising power back for this program. You see him carrying a lot of defenders, like you said. He's going to have to rest up and get ready, too. You have to imagine he's... Depending on how the injury situation of Garnett and Marcano might be tasked to be a very feature back in this lineup. Play clock down to seven. Imagine the Eagles will take this down to about one before they call one of their last remaining timeouts. That's exactly what they do. One second left on the game clock, or the play clock, and 31 on the game clock. So the punt will be coming up with 31 seconds left on the clock and the Eagles fans starting to celebrate knowing that they feel like this one is in tow. Now the question is, how quickly can you get over to that far side end zone in that corner and who's going to be lifting that trap when all's said and done? I, my money would be on some of the old linemen getting there and getting that one up. There's definitely been some key contributors on both sides of the ball. Some timely interceptions, including that Parker LaFrance grab. Basically sealed this one away. Some Eagle coaches just kind of telling some of the players to stay back on the sidelines. Don't need a penalty in this situation. Not quite ready to rush the field. <laughs> Again, Parody back at around his own 34-yard line awaiting this snap and for the punt. Good clean snap, good clean punt. It's going to be dropped. And it's going to be down right there at the 25 yard line. So 75 yards to get for that touchdown. But again, looks like it's all she wrote here on this one, barring an incredible comeback. This really needs to be one play, a touchdown, an onside kick recovery, and then. You got a deep field goal shot, or you got to get a little bit further downfield. We've seen it before. I've seen crazier things happen in games. It would be unlikely at this point, but not impossible. And what we have seen on that onside kick, U and E had a pretty good kick there. Just happened Almost to bounce in the right direction. Back. Yeah. And no. Takes a three-step drop, looking for some space, trying to pass it over, and it's picked cleanly. And Hassan is just going to take this one all the way back, and it's a pick six. And that one will seal the victory in this contest. Well, Tucker Buzzle has been huge for this defense all year. Comes away with a nice, clean pick right there, 4-6. And this really just puts the cherry on top for this win. Buzzle takes it back 35 yards for six. And will make this look a little bit more emphatic of a victory here over their in-state rivals, UNE. I'm surprised the flag hasn't been thrown on the sideline yet. Yeah, they're getting a little rowdy down there, but rowdy in a good way. And some may say a rivalry for a team with a new program. Well, it's definitely on display here today. Might not be long time rivals, but you can see and feel a little bit of the animosity between these two teams. 
But right now it's been one-sided in favor of the Eagles in the last two years. PAT up, PAT good. As it'll be 31 to 14, and just 13 ticks left on the clock. The UNE fans starting to head out towards their cars to make the trek back down to the southern part of the state. Definitely not the way they want to be heading home. Well, the good news is it's a shorter drive than some. Absolutely. Two-hour drive down south for a lot of these fans. The ones wearing Hudson Eagle green and gold, though, with a lot more smiles on their faces than their UNE fan counterparts. Benault in this offense, which had been one of the best in all of the CCC, really not, unable to get anything going. A couple rushing touchdowns, but or at least one rushing touchdown through, but not really really brewing with a semblance of the 30 points per game tune they entered with. And for this Eagles defense, it's a huge confidence boost, especially heading into some tougher opponents in the next three weeks. But again, both sides of the ball really showed up for the Eagles, and that's really been the story. Yeah, we talked about it too. The Eagles coming up after this one, head on the road for at least a contest. As we'll be taking on Curry College, which is the team that uh, UNE beat last week, 37 to 21. So a chance for the Eagles to make it two in a row, albeit on the road, before taking on Western New England in two weeks here from Dr. John W. Winkin Sports Complex. And for the Eagles, especially on that offensive side of the ball, Nick Visser just looked very good today, going through his progressions very well something that you hadn't really been seeing the first couple of, of home games for the Eagles. And he had a lot of struggles. Mahoney runs it up the middle. UNE will concede defeat in this one. As the horn will sound, this thing is over. Hudson Eagles pick up their first conference victory of the season and more importantly for them, win the lobster trap for the second consecutive year. And they will close the books on a 31 to 14 victory over the University of New England Nor'easters. Pretty good team victory, all things considered. A couple turnovers forced, a good establishing of a running game, even with a depleted backfield. Passing game was on point as well, and a pretty strong victory for the Eagles, who desperately needed it here after a two game losing streak. Absolutely, like I was saying, a huge momentum boost for both sides of the ball. Played great today. Both teams are going to be talking amongst themselves here and congratulate them on a great 60 minutes of football here from this field. And again, the lobster trap will be given to the Eagles once more as it will stay in their possession for another season. But it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you here today again. Uh, I want to thank my broadcast partner, Ethan Moss, for doing a tremendous job here. And uh, I know you got some volleyball coming up, right? Yeah, tonight at 6. Uh, it'll be MMA visiting. Again, should be a very interesting, it's going to be a tough game for the Eagles, but I think I think there's definitely some room for the Eagles to come and win that one. So volleyball will be coming up at 5 o'clock and some field hockey, I was just told, 7. So a lot of action still to come here on the campus of Hassan University. So the Eagles will go and get that lobster trap, and it's the only two players going to go pick that up. I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. <laughs> That's my question. Will they be able to lift it on their own? Are they going to wait for some more help? Looks like they're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and probably a wise decision as well. Sp especially after our executive producer, Tyler Huey, said he had to help lift that with Coach Nat Clark. And it was a little bit more difficult than they had anticipated. So maybe they'll just leave it over there. It's already on the table. It's, it's You can move it later. Right. <laughs> But that's going to do it for our broadcast here today. I'd like to thank our camera operator, Sam Johnson, for doing a great job. Our executive producer, Tyler Huey. My broadcast partner, Ethan Moss. I'm Brian Sackpole saying so long from Bangor. We're the final score on this one. Husson 31, UNE 14. This has been a presentation of the Husson Eagles Sports Network.